Nothing in progress. That's what you're looking for, dude. <laughs> That's how we start. Today. Stopping in, we've been tapping in. We ain't never late. Dropping gems, we've been locking in. Now let's elevate. Took else to win. Running laps again. This is steady race. People's champ, boy. Yeah, you know I've been the heavyweight. Stopping in, we've been tapping in. We ain't never late. Dropping gems, we've been locking in. Now let's elevate. Took else to win. Running laps again. This is steady race. People's champ, boy. Yeah, you know I've been the heavyweight. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back. It is September 5th, Labor Day Monday, mm-hmm. episode 60. Heavyweight Bros is back in the building. I feel, like, I feel like we just keep taking longer and longer hiatuses before we come back. But we're going to try to get that uh, all situated because, like, you know, the school year just started, so everything's a little bit wild. But don't worry, your boys will be back in here. Speaking of your boys, I am your host, per usual, your boy, the 5XL assassin, the diabolical diabetic, your man, the big nasty, and to my right is the high yellow head man, the <laughs> freaking deacon, Coach Buck himself, Uncle Raisin. What's going on, man? How you doing? Man, I'm excited, man. I'm chilling, you know me. You know how I feel when I get to pod time. <laughs> and I ain't worried about the time in between episodes. So I know the content is good and the people we waiting for us, man. I like to see the consistency and the love. You understand? You understand? But if we want to see the consistency, we have to be consistent. You know what I'm saying? You got to be you know who's going to change gonna say water. that? You know who's going to say that? The one person who says they like the pod but don't really be watching it. That's what they're going to say. Damn. We hear from the real ones. We like, any, real anytime ones. anybody asks me, like, yo, did you see this? I'm like, you tell me. Did I see it? <laughs> <laughs> that was a quick turnaround. Uh, kind of like get it out the way. Kind of like the quick turnaround. It's from your boy, our boy G Head over at Custom Merch on IG and Etsy. If you go to IG and Etsy, type in the. the <laughs> type in custom merch <laughs> and a promo code heavyweight bro is spelled H W the number eight B R O S to save you ten percent off your order because the more you spend, the more you save. I mean, we want. How are you doing? Yeah, okay. You are just like, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm taking the reins. Pull on in. <laughs> and it's like it is pure chaos. Right now. Like, this is like the, I love a garbage truck on it. fire. Like as a, pandemonium. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm doing all right. I guess I was doing all right <laughs> until ten seconds ago. I get up and I'll do it. Quick turnaround. You know, I, I swear to God, don't you come in? I was like, we're not. Do you want to just dig or get right into it? It's uh, go straight into digging. Yeah, we get these digging in the crates. No diggity, no doubt. Mm-hmm. All right. So the first thing we have on here. Sorry, something was like on my leg. Um, we have DJ Khaled. I'm, my bad. I'm gonna try that again. <laughs> First thing on the chaos. Top, what's happening? Girl? We have DJ Khaled. So he had. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Look up, look up. So he he released a new album. I want to say it's like twelve tracks. Can I be wrong? I think it's a little bit more than that. I think it's like sixteen or something like that. All right. So I'm a few off. I would say if you want, like I, I can look at the. You can look up the distance. one. I know. Um, as DJ Khaled always does, he is. Always fascinates his fan base with the people that he puts on features and puts on the same tracks and um, the song choice and the beats and everything else that he produces. It's 18 songs. 18. So I wanted to say 18 first, but I felt like that was way too too yeah, high. I feel like before we even talk about this album, we just have to talk about who's on this album. Go ahead. I'm going to literally read these people off. Because it segues off of what I was just saying. Deep breath. All right. Okay. We have Drake, mm-hmm. Rick Ross, Lil Wayne. Jay Z, Eminem, Kanye, Future, mm-hmm. Lil Baby, mm-hmm. Lil Dirk, mm-hmm. Twenty One Savage, Roddy Rich, Quavo, Takeoff, Drake and Lil Baby, Future, SZA, Nardo Wick, Kodak Black, Don Tolliver, Travis Scott, Gunna, Roddy Rich, Lotto, The City Girls, Twenty One Savage, Skeebing, Buju Bantan, Capleton, Juice World, Jada Kiss, and Vori. So basically, everybody who makes music, for the most part, no Griselda's on there though. Wow, I didn't notice that. I just thought about it right I now. Like I was, I did not I read, didn't his, I did not read a Griselda name on there. Wow. Also, no Corday, no Joey Badass, no JID, no Dreamville artists. There's no Cole. Wow. No Kendrick. Yeah. Sheesh. Is it more surprising who's not on the Khaled album than who is on the Khaled album? Yeah, I felt like if you put the who's not against the who's who's, yeah. that'd be pretty interesting to watch. Um, did you listen to the album? I got through, I didn't get through all 18. I want to say maybe I got through like four. 
Maybe that is not the number I expected well, you to go with. Crazy week, bro. It's like you football started, high school football started. You know I coach both of those. By the way, shout out to my my ten U Tigers. They got they they dubbed this week yesterday. Um, first time they put up forty points. They was firing on all cylinders. Defense looked crazy. We was mm-hmm. getting touchdowns through the air on the ground, forcing turnovers. It was impeccable. Okay. It was impeccable. And I showed up in my um paid in full. Harlem Cameron outfit. <laughs> I thought you just came back from paintballing. Yeah, man. Like hey, listen, man, I do it for the kids, man. Anything to make them feel good about going out there. Really, because I think you'd be uncomfortable. Playing nah, I didn't. I think I took <laughs> the pressure off of them so they could compete. You joke him Noah now? Like, that's what you're doing? Like, I make a big skeptical of myself so that way, like, spectacle there you of myself go. so that yeah. way I do? Yeah, kind of like that. But um, I know the big thing about this album is the God... God did. There you go. God did. The God album. did album. Um, it's got like it's like seven, eight minute track, I believe. It's got a bunch of people on it, but everybody's raving over the Jay Z verse. Right. I alley oop to Joel. Oh, did you listen to the song with yeah. the Jay Z verse? What'd you think? I'm a Jay Z fan, bro. I don't want to. I want to feel impartial. Okay. I think this song is easily the bright spot on this album. Mm-hmm. Um, and like. There were people trying to make the argument that, like, Lil Wayne's verse was actually better than Jay-Z's verse. Like, Jay-Z just had way more time because, like, he had, like, a – he didn't do 16. Jay-Z did, like, 48 bars, like, on, on it mm-hmm. or whatever. And while I don't think it was, like, the most craziest Jay-Z verse or, like, it was, like, absolutely, like, impeccable, it was a really, really good verse. Like, I was, like, there's going to be an argument, like, when you get to the end of the year, it's, like, where do we put Jay-Z's verse for, like, verse of the year mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, I think it was – very, very much in line and where he is in life and how he has grown as a man and the type of business that he handles and where he is like Jay Z's always said I switch rhymes every twenty two flows. So just like he's not gonna be rapping like Hawaiian soapy fame. <laughs> that's not where he's at no more. You know what I mean? He's not fitted caps and big chains no more. Like, you know what I mean? He's got the fro, he wearing mauve. It's like it's a different type of Jay Z so, and that's how the bars represent. So um when people say things, I, I think they need to look at the evolution of the rappers or artists that they're listening to to see if they're still stuck in the same genre or which they make you happy or if they're happy with themselves and making good music based on that. I think that this song still couldn't save this album. I feel like this album was hot dookie for all do the I people. Do not that... need to listen to the... No, you do. Don't do that. Okay. No, don't try to play that. No. <laughs> You absolutely do. All right, I'm putting it on my reminder. But now. like, as far as like, you know, like the 18 songs and stuff like that, like, there's maybe four songs on here that are actually good songs. Really? I feel like. Dang. I feel like there's like he has like three so different I... Drake songs, and I feel like there's only like one of them is actually really good. So I heard one Drake song. I well, the lead single the off of J- was the Staying Alive one. Yeah, that's the one. Um, I heard the Jay Z song. I listened to the Jada joint. I think that's another one of the best songs on there. Um. I can't remember what the fourth song was that I listened to, but it, it, it's irrelevant. I'll go through the album to make sure. Did you really feel that that bad about it? I did. There was like, uh, we had that fantasy draft over in Granby. Yep. On the way there, like it was like my third time listening to the album, okay. and I, I had like uh, I was there with my brother, and it was his first time listening to it, mm-hmm. and it's just like. I was like, I wanted to skip this song, but then I was like, but you haven't heard you this haven't song. Heard it. So it's like, I got to listen to it again. And it's like, at one point, like I was driving and I did like something like this. And he was like, bro, I don't know why you didn't skip this joint. And I was like, eh, I was like, all right, so it's skippable, right? Ugh. And he was like, I mean, but if you he was like, honestly, to... he was like, honestly, after the second song, I was like, I, ha- I want him to change his album. I was like, I felt like you would want to hear it. And he was just like, no. He was I, like, I, it was I, feel not... like, I feel like it wasn't on you though. If I'm the person listening to it the first time, the skips are on me. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <kinda. laughs> but I was just like, yo, know, like he was like, how he was like, is there any other track that I should listen to? And I was just like, Damn, not really. really. I was like, I was like, well, I'll put on this oh, one. And he was like, man. he's like, yeah, that was cool. That was okay. Uh, the one of the songs where I was like, if it wasn't for the Jay Z, um, the Jay Z song, I was like, the second best song is the one with the city girls and Lotto. Mm. I was like, that joint went hard, and mm. I think it was the they used the. the well, that's the thing is like, there's so many samples like on this album that it's hard to pinpoint all oh, of them. I'm pretty sure the the Lotto City Girls one. It was uh, Mr. Cheeks likes camera action. Mm-hmm. Was like the beat, and it was like, oh, these girls were spitting on it. I was just like, I was like, I know that these. These young ladies did not come out here to show out like all everybody else out here. There's a song, and you know, I've been 
all about these 21 Savage features. Yes. There's a song with 21 Savage on it, and I felt severely let down. I was just like... Man, he's a feature king. He that's, was a feature king at one point. It was like, your features was better than your own song. 100%. 100%. And he dropped the ball on the feature? I felt like... I was like, ooh. Who was, who was, was that? It was just him? No, it was a couple people on it. But it's like... I was like, wow, you got a bad 21 Savage feature? He had a song that Travis Scott is on, and like halfway through the song, I was like, is this Travis Scott? Oh, and it was like, no. yeah. And I was just like, oof. I was like, this is what a Travis Scott sounds like on a You're song that he doesn't do the B is to Listen to it. You do. Oh my God. You do. I'm going to go through it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to. Well, I'm seeing as you only with. listen to four songs, so like you don't really have much of an opinion on it, but like, as I listen to this album, I, mean, I don't think it's one of the 10 best albums of the year. I thought it, I think it's for people who don't care about DJ Khaled and stuff like that. Like, I don't think that there's a summer banger on here. He has a song with the, with, um, the Migos minus Offset because like they're still the Migos, but like there's no more Offset in the group, so it's like take off and, and uh, which is weird. Um, but they're doing um, oh my god, it's gonna kill me. Uh, I need to look it up because it's like the song that they're doing. This is very heartbreaking, bro. Because like I said, I listened to the three, four songs, and those were pretty entertaining. And then you tell me you're sixteen. Oh, I'm sorry, twelve other songs. Yeah, that's like terrible. So if I were to tell you that DJ Khaled was going to sample a very popular 80s song that wasn't very good, but everybody liked, mm -hmm. and that you were going to use the Migos on it, mm -hmm. would you? Would your, any of your guesses be that it was going to be Eddie Murphy's party all the time? Come on, man. Don't do this <laughs> yeah. to me, man. Don't do this <laughs> just, to so me, like, Just imagine, like, don't my do girl to wants to party Come all the time. On, oh, oh, mama. Look at that, like, 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 this, man. <laughs> Kelly, you running out of tricks that fast, man? Like, like, uh, um, I was th that's oh, the thing is I feel like man. the sampling and stuff like that is very uninspired. And it's like that's where it's like, oh, you're just like you're really just Where's playing this thing. Right? Yeah, but I oh, do feel like man. the girls, like on on the Mr. Cheeks one, like they went football, like they went off on the lights game reaction. They use the Mr. Cheeks show? That's like, like yeah, that's the one the, the girls use. Oh, all right, I'm turning around. Let me see something. Come with me. Yeah. Really yeah, 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 I'm interested in that. Right. I want to stop talking about this album so that way I can talk about the second album that we we're talking about, which I'm listening to tonight, which I think is a contender for album of the year right now. Don't say that. Are you serious? JID's The Forever Story. Oh my goodness. I think is incredible. Oh. Like, I've listened to it at and minimum nine times all the way through. All right, so I'm definitely listening to this album tonight. Yes. I'm, I was like, I had already planned on it. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that you had already gotten through it, so I was kind of oh, tight yeah. that I don't have a perspective on this album. He's, he's got to be, really he's gotta be watching it because like, I know he's a loyal lo uh, listener slash watcher. My man, Nikki Hendrix, Nick Jennings, is the biggest JID fan I know. Yes. I text him because... Uh, like I said, it came out the same day as the DJ Khaled album. So I had already listened to the DJ Khaled album three times. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it. So like I was like, I was like, there's gotta be something else I could listen to to cleanse my palate. I did it with the Joey Badass. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, yo, like DJ Khaled's the only person that dropped. And then like I'm looking and, and like, you know, they're like, hey, if you like this, like check out this new GID. I was like, JID had an album and I didn't yeah, know I didn't, about it. I, didn't know I listened to the either. second song and I texted this dude. I was like, yo, man. Like, was <laughs> I, I was like, you, ain't, you wasn't gonna let me know that JID dropped. He's like, oh, I thought you knew. I was like, you're better than this. You're better. <laughs> he was like, he's like, I've already listened to it three times. It's oh. amazing. I was like, that's what I'm saying, bro. I was listen, like, yo. I was hyped to put it on my docket to listen later when this he had an interview. I think you sent me the interview. He sent me the interview, and I was like, I'm gonna send he, everybody else this yeah, interview. It's like a 15 minute interview. Yeah. And he's like, bought some land. It's like him with Ebro. Yeah. There you go. It's Ebro. But the thing that, that stepped out to me that made me really want to, I, I was going to listen to the album anyway, but when I heard him say, um, yeah, there's one song in particular on there that I really, really love. And he's like, oh, okay, what's the song? So he's like, nah, chill. I'm like, what? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, this one's like for the fans, but I want to experience it with them. So like once I made the song, it went on the album and I haven't listened to it since. Like I want it to be a fresh experience for me the same way it is for them so we can enjoy it together. I'm going to let you know right now, it's worth it. I was like, it's oh worth my it. goodness. It's worth it. I was like, oh my I know exactly goodness. the song he's talking about. What's, so, a, what's the name of it? Um, I don't know the name of the song because like that's the thing is like it's hard to like keep track of like a lot of them yeah, like yeah. that, but it's the one with Lil Wayne because he got a Lil Wayne feature. Mm -hmm. And he didn't expect to get the Lil Wayne feature. Oh, and he's just like, yo, I got Lil Wayne on my album. Oh, man. And like, Lil Wayne was on the Khaled joint. Yeah. He didn't show up. Like, he wasn't doing all that. <laughs> he he came JID. on the JID. He, he was like, I'm showing up and showing out. He's like, I'm going to bring bars for yeah. somebody who got bars. He showed up. Oh, and he showed up. Man. 
Twenty One Savage is on the the J. Forever J. Store on the JID, and it's better than oh boy, my goodness. it might it, oh my it's the lead goodness. single. It's called like Surround Sound, I believe it's called, mm-hmm. and like I think it's uh it's the, supposed to be the lead single for the album, and I was just like yeah, read me the features. I, you already got Lil Wayne, you already got Twenty One Savage. There's not too too many features. I didn't expect it to be. Uh, let's see. We got Kenny Mason, which I don't know who he is, but he's really good on this song. Mm-hmm. Uh, Earth Gang, yep, that 21 makes sense. Savage, mm-hmm. Baby Tate, mm-hmm. Lil Durk, mm-hmm. Ari Lennox, mm-hmm. Yasin Bey, mm-hmm. which is a very big surprise. I heard that song. It was a very I big surprise. Song. I heard that's for y'all who don't know who Yasin Bey is. He was formerly known as Most F. And that brother still has it. <laughs> he, did, he very he, much has it. That, mind you, I didn't want to listen to the album, like, not all in in the row because you know i like i like to know how it goes mm-hmm. but that song popped up and i was like you see me i was like i could not not listen to it i was just like yo this joy fire this joy is fire um jante austin um mm-hmm. who's apparently his cousin um okay. and then that's pretty much it. it's 15 songs okay. the album's an hour long okay nobody from dreamville uh besides kenny Please. mason like that's it and nobody from dreamville is on it gotcha okay or oh, Ari Lennox. Ari Lennox is on it. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. And Earth Gang. There's bad, but yeah, there's yeah, there's definitely yeah, people on it. I'm tripping. Yeah, yeah, there's okay. definitely much about. Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm no so cold. Excited. No sign of cold. So you know, right now, I'm really high on the Joey album. I'm, if you had to put JID somewhere near the Joey, just to give me a buffer of what I'm about to say. Before we did this episode, mm-hmm. I was I I have my running list going of mm-hmm. like. Okay. I said movies, TV shows, and albums. So like I was entering them in, and I'm trying to see like where they're going. I have moved three albums into the top three. Okay. And like I feel like they're all slap boxing for first place right now. And okay. it is. And like I, uh, I took Saturday mm-hmm. to re-listen to all three of them, and I still don't know who's going. <laughs> oh, okay. But it is Give the Corday the- album. Okay. Yeah. It is Joey I knew, Badass, I knew that. and it is this JID. Oh, and it's man. I. If I'm being honest with myself, I think Joey Badass might be the number one album of the year. I think he might be. I want to, if I'm being honest. Don't tell me that. So, so like, what you got? So, like, I listened through, to the album all the way through. Yep. I wound up hitting up Nick, and I was just like, yo, this album is incredible, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. So then he asked me, he's like, I've been waiting for you to tell me that you that you went all the way through with it. He goes, what? He's like, um, what are, what's your favorite songs? And, like, what's the songs that are, like, skippable? And, like, my literal sentence was him. I was like, I'm having a very hard time finding songs that I don't like on this album. Mm. So I was like, I don't think that I have mm. any for that. But I was like, let me give you like my top mm. six. And it was like, I went to go give him like these six songs and I added like four more songs on it. He was like, that's pretty much the whole album. <laughs> that's how I, was I was like, I'm having a that's hard time, album. bro. That's I'm so having a hard album. time, bro. Oh man. <laughs> if I was to if I was to do like I'm... a like a some sort of like advertisement or like a big quote on here, mm-hmm. I feel like this album is what people wanted Kendrick Lamar's album to sound like. Oh, and it was and it wasn't yo, that. Yo, chill, yo, chill, chill, yo, chill, yo, chill, yo, chill, yo, chill, that's what I'm saying. Yo, chill. Big words for the big time. Yeah, yeah, yo, yeah. That's it, yo, I can't wait to get to it. I can't wait to it. I got to look at it, look at it, look at it. And I feel like you should listen to them like in orders, like it's about like if you can. Oh yeah, that's the only way you can do it. The sequence is important. People don't do that. People do. I listen. I tell people all the time. Like they be like, "Oh, I only listen to here, here, here." And I'm like, "Nah, man. Like these albums. Like it matters how you listen." Yeah, to I, it. I can still hear. Like I, we'll take Biggie for instance. Like if I'm listening to like the the Biggie Ready to Die, or like say somebody randomly picks a song, mm-hmm. and like it's on the radio, or maybe it's like at a game or whatever it may. You're be, already rapping the next song. You know the next song that's coming yeah. after it, and you're just like, "Oh yeah, this is not where we at." Right? <laughs> yeah, it's just like that stuff matters. That stuff matters, but. Dang man, I'm so excited to listen to this album now. Dang. I mean, if I we I feel like we have to come up with some sort of like rating system, like what the that we have for like the movies, mm-hmm. where it's just like you know, like is it skippable? Is it like you know? But it's like it's how many, tough. How many skips? Yeah, how many skips make it not even listenable. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you know, you can miss this album, or like you should check it out. Like we have to figure out some sort of system for that. Yeah. Like kind of like when Source used to do the five mics, so people would need to know if they listen to it. My thing I is like, like the I skips, have, man. It's no skips. Four skips. Three skips. Like, ugh. It's been, I, I got I, a 15 track album, and you know, I mess around to you six skips on there. I'm like, hey, all right. That's how I felt about Donda. You guys were giving me hell for it, and I was like, I feel like I, I don't know you guys, man. I respect your opinion, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know me. I, I will. I'll tell you right now. Ever since I listened to that album, I don't think I've ever went back to it. Like ever. I ain't been back to it in a while. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's I like I had. I think I went back to CLB before I went back to that. 
goodness, man. This is great. All right, we got to move on. Because right, I'm getting too excited. I'm getting too excited. All right, we're in, uh, we in Insomni Hour. All right. Wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. We are in Insomni Hour. Yeah, what's the matter? <laughs> oh, you want me to take the lead? Yeah. No, it's not good. I'm not going to do it. I can't get after it like you did. <laughs> Wake me up inside. Wake me up. Wake me up inside. Save me. Save me from the night. <laughs> See how you can get after it even with a chuckle in there? But like, what was the, the lackadaisical effort? Because I, like, yeah, like, because wake, me I, wake me up. <laughs> wake me up before you Google. Uh, we might have a new, what you got on the say? I like that. That was, pretty <laughs> dope. that was pretty dope. I ain't going front. All right, so first thing on the docket is Mike. We're going to get that out the way right quick. So I didn't realize the whole Mike thing, right? So like I start, you actually happen, Joel, you just so happen to start. Me. Go ahead. So Joel hits me up yesterday. He's like, yo. When we potting tomorrow. All right, what time? Cool. Um, I'm about to start watching the mic joint. I'm just, I was already like two I'm, minutes in. I'm two minutes into the mic joint. I was like, yo, bro, you can't be watching that. Yeah. Joel says. I was like, why not? It was just Mike Tyson show. I love Mike Tyson. Yeah, right. Me too. But guess who's not supporting it? <laughs> Mike Tyson. <laughs> yes. Mike Tyson said he did not give clearance to. I don't know. Hulu? Hulu. Yeah. To Hulu to um, make the TV show. Um, he doesn't know how they bought the rights to his story or however it is. Like, all this production was happening without his say-so, without, like, his expertise on his life. Mm. And he's basically saying that, like, he has nothing to do with this. So this is just somebody's version of Mike Tyson's life based off information that they've gotten from somewhere else. Like, if I'm going to do something about Mike, I'm calling, I'm calling in Mike. You know what I mean? Um, he's, he's not for it. It's kind of like the same situation where Dave Chappelle was like, Netflix is not paying me. Like, don't watch my show on Netflix. Watch it here. Um, I don't think this is about money for Tyson. I just, I think that, um, for me, I think that he's so past, so far past that Tyson that he was, that he doesn't probably doesn't even want to see himself depicted in that light. Like that is what it was. And now he is where he is, and he doesn't care to go back to that. And if it if he did have to, he would want it to be on his terms, which they did not do. But I'm not gonna lie, like you told me, they were like, "Yo, you can't watch it." Like Mike Tyson said, he's not supporting it, and I was like, "Yeah, still gonna watch it though." Like I, was, right. I still gotta wanna watch it. And then you brought it, and then how did you word it to me? I said, "Listen, if you ran into Mike." Let's say you in the mall. He's like, yo, Mike, I love you, man. Can I get an autograph? Yeah, man, give you an autograph. I'm like, hey, I'm about to start watching your show. And Mike says, hey, man, I appreciate it if you wouldn't watch my sh- watch that show because it's not endorsed by me and nor did they have rights by me. So if, I'd appreciate it if you don't support it. And you would have sold Mike. I was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, I turned it off mad reluctantly. I, was like, like, I think I watched like another like 20 seconds and I was like, <laughs> it just ruined this for me. Right, right. And I just saw a really bad picture of like the guy who plays Mike with old man skin with the tat on his face, and it was like, why they got this man looking you know, like this? Me and my brother were arguing for the longest time because I was like, I don't think that's because he was just like, no, that's the actor in makeup, and I was like, nah, I think that's just some old dude that they nah, got wearing it. Nah. And we were arguing, and then like I came to it, I was like, nah, he's just in bad makeup. Bro. Yeah. But the thing is, like, yes. I I am a huge Mike Tyson fan, and mm-hmm. like I really like the actor who's playing. Mike in the show. It was like he was actually one of my choices to recast uh, T'Challa in the Black Panther movies. I was like, I think he would be a solid um, replacement for Chadwick Boseman. <sighs> so like, I was just like, I feel like it, it. This thing is designed for me to watch it. And like, after like another thirty seconds, I was just like, All right, I'll watch something else. Thank and you. I started watching this fool, <laughs> <laughs> which I plan on watching. Okay. As soon as you start watching Mo, I gotta finish. Can I finish the show first? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, all right. So next on the docket is rap stuff. Are you caught up? Yeah, that's a finale. We're not. We're gonna do that now. That was a. Fa- all right. We'll, now we'll get back to that. Bang them trailers we'll, out. We'll first. go. Uh, yeah, we can bang the trailers out first. All right. So Atlanta mm-hmm. finally set a date. Yep. For some reason, I feel like we talked about this already, but we had a wrong date. It might have been a whack trailer that somebody set me up with. But <laughs> either way. <laughs> The final season of Atlanta is happening September 15th, which is 10 days from today. Um, and a lot of doors are going to get closed. Like, this is like an end of an era right here. Um, but it does glad... seem like they're going back to the roots, though, where it's like, it's yes. all the... And I'm glad they did not wait forever to give us the final season. Could, just for me, just because I didn't like the way the last season ended. Like, it was a really good episode. I just didn't think it was a finale episode. Mm-hmm. But I like the fact that they're jumping right back into it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, super entertaining. And I like to see, 
like how they're gonna close everything out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like what everybody's story is going into those last few episodes. So yeah, because like I, sweet. I feel like that's been a lot of the things for like a lot of the big TV shows mm-hmm. that, that like have come out in like the last 15 years yep. is like a lot of shows have been having trouble sticking the landing. Yes. Like, you know, most notably like a Game of Thrones. Yes. And then it's like, so like when the shows do stick the landing, like it almost seems like we're like, it's like, oh, thank God. Yes. Like when we talk about like Better Call Saul's or like mm-hmm. Breaking Bad's where like it's just great series finales mm-hmm. and it's like as great, as highly as we think of um atlanta like we just want that for them because like we also feel like the ozark finale series finale was like it was divisive Mm -hmm. but people were just like was that good Mm -hmm. was it not good Mm -hmm. stuff like that so it's like we're just we're hoping for the best right um just a segue real quick because this will be a quick one and we can get it off the docket um a show that i was watching that you never got into but some other people may be watching is animal kingdom Mm. they had their series series finale and they did not let go of the pins and it was it was very um not what i expected and okay. I, it was very entertaining um it had some sad moments it had some good moments it had some oh shoot didn't expect that to happen type moments and it was it was it was really dope so i enjoyed the series animal kingdom shouts out to you guys um anybody who's watching it or may want a new show to watch animal kingdom is not bad i want to say it's four seasons what is 10 it episodes i was watching it on my app, but I want to say AMC. If I had okay. to take a guess, okay. I would say AMC. But it's basically like um, a surfboard family that grew up in like. I know what the show is. I oh, just yeah, didn't know yeah. where to watch it at. Oh, yeah, I know you've yeah. talked about it before. Definitely. So, yeah, they had their series finale. It was really dope. It was super entertaining. I feel like it was Dollar General uh, Sons of Anarchy. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Not bad. Not bad. I won't call it Dollar General. <laughs> maybe it's like if you watch your Sons of Anarchy fix, it's like, like you can get it. It's like Walmart Target type thing. Sativa, like whatever, 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 whatever you want to call it, right? It's like Pfizer, Johnson and Johnson. It's like it's, yeah. it's somewhere in there, but it, it was a good show. Um, another release date we have is Abbott Elementary season two. So a week after you get to watch the start of the final season of Atlanta. The next week you get to start season two of Abbott Elementary on the 21st. I'm with it. I am super with it. I sh- they showed a trailer. It was super hilarious. I was just like, they're just going to pick up right where they left in the off. background. Yes. Picked up right where they left off. Um, and I love the fact that they're playing, paying strong tribute to um, the community that they are serving to have the show in. I don't know if anybody on a writing cast or anything like that is from Philadelphia, but why is Philly getting so much love recently? We have Bel Air. They had like what's called we have freeway in there we had all this other stuff going Listen, on man, and people riding for their city man we gotta get some people locally to start doing some stuff man you know what i mean we got creed like what else you guys need man right <laughs> springfield movies at? <laughs> um we, you know the problem is, is our only representation is the Wahlberg, so we got to change that <laughs> we invented basketball we did. Like the t- second or third most popular sport in the world. We we'll figure it out one way. We're gonna get a James N- James Naismith movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a bunch of people in it that don't look like us. I'm all set. I'm all set. I'm all set. Sorry. Um. And last but not least, for releases, Your Honor. I know Joel's gonna do that ugh, again. I was gonna say anything. I'm super excited about it. They have uh, what's his name? Brian Cock uh, Cranston. Brian Cranston. He's got the super gray hobo beard. Look like Rick Grimes. I was like, is this Walking Dead trailer or the Arata trailer? Yeah, I, I don't even call it Rick Grimes. He kind of looked like Blue from old school. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> but he's like standing there in a cemetery. His back's to the camera and he like looks over his shoulder kind of slightly. And he's like, there's a, you can't. You can't bury bodies deep enough that a storm won't uncover, and then it just says you're on a season two. It doesn't have a date yet, but I'm super excited on where it goes based on how the last season ended. Um, it's it's going to be a lot going on, and I feel like based on where the last season ended, even though Joel wasn't big on it, um, they have no right, no no choice but to get right to the action. Like you have to get right to it because there's 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 no pleasantries to deal with anymore. So from from first I, episode, I know started, that there are shows that are slow burns. Yes. This was a, like a molasses. Burn. It was like, oh, man. It was like, I was, that's my thing is it was just like, wow, we are taking so long to get to like what we need to get to. Like it was killing me in that show. I'm sorry, man. I, I enjoyed it. 
I feel like I for, for every maybe season hour two, long... Maybe season two will make it up for you. I'm not going to watch season two. Are you out of your mind? I'm going to let you watch season two and then like... I'm going to send you clips so you can be like, you know what? I feel like that's what this show could have been. I feel like every <laughs> every hour long episode, there was a two minute span where I was like, oh snap. And then it'd be like, next episode. I'm like, so you want me to send you all the old snaps? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm like, oh, I think I get the gist I, of this. I think I stuff. watched the whole season. <laughs> yeah. Send me all the old snaps from each episode. It's like, I didn't need any of this. Wow, that's terrible. Well, I'm excited about it. We'll see where it goes. Um, so we got, oh, one thing that's not on here. Two things, actually. I'm sorry. I've been starting a lot of shows because shows have been going off on me. So um, I did start Mo. Yes. I've heard great things. I, I like him as a comedian, so like I'm definitely gonna give it a shot. Yes, yeah, so which is on Netflix. It's on Netflix, and Mo is um, an immigrant that migrated over from Palestine. Okay. Him, his father, his sisters, and his mom. His dad started a store while they were in America. His dad ends up passing away, so like he feels like he's responsible for taking care of the family, but yet he can barely take care of himself, and he's trying to do all these. Um, Welcome to America. Right. Like hustles and bustles of trying to get gainful employment while working under the table because he doesn't have his citizenship while going back and forth through the courts to make sure that he doesn't get deported. Um, the homie Toby Inigwe is in it. Um, the rapper, I don't know if any of y'all don't know him. If you don't, then you're tripping. Uh, for the young kids, he definitely has a song on 2K where um, he talks about how um, Dave Chappelle and Erica Badu said he was dope. So. Because um, he's, he's dope. Because like he's, he's dope. Like, yeah. Right. And when I first so, saw Another him, shout out to Nick for putting me on to Toby because much of all, I was like, oh, yeah, this brother, he's spitting, spitting. Definitely. Definitely. So, do, you, so, do yourself a favor and search up the song Father Figures with uh, him, Royce the Five Nine, and Black Thought. That, ooh, when they got on the the, 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 the long jackets yeah. with the faces on the front, that you know he designs all of that, right? Nah, like I, I thought his wife would design that stuff. Yeah, that's part of the family. Like, oh, they design all that together. So they don't go out and buy a bunch of stuff. Everything that they wear in the videos and the, the choreo choreography, they do all that. They do all that. So he's definitely making sure that don't nobody got hands on his artistic um, integrity. integrity except for himself. So, yeah, he's in the show Mo, and I thought, like, maybe it was just, like, you know, a quick little spot. Like, oh, yeah, he's he's on the show. But, no, he's, like... He plays Mo's best friend in the show, so he's like in six of the eight episodes or whatever. Yeah. It's just like it was really entertaining, really fun watch. So if you're looking for something quick to watch, it's not long episodes; it's only eight episodes, and you can knock it out really quick the first season. Um, segueing from that, my boy is back on. Who's your boy? I don't know his name. <laughs> What story and I don't about? want to tell you that uh, he's the dude from Aquaman. <laughs> Jason Momoa. Momoa. Ah! <laughs> I got one. I got one. We said it at the same time, so you didn't give me that C. one. <laughs> C. Yeah, so for y'all. Another show that, that I'm not going to see. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> for y'all who are looking for something new to watch, this is um, it's not too far into this is season three. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Um, it's only two episodes in, and they're getting right to the action, just like straight to it. This is on Apple TV? I believe so. You know where I'm watching it. <laughs> I believe you don't so. Give, you don't give these people I no connections so. to figure out how I to I believe so, but you're always on it, and you're always right spec, spec, smack dab right there where you need to be. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm catching the Joels. But <laughs> um, for those who want to know the premise of the show, basically everybody in the world is blind, and like they're kind of almost thrown back to like medieval times of living and then there are a few people who can see and they're counting them as witches and they're, they're like hunting the people who can see how can they find them you'd be surprised how strong your senses are based on not having a sense which is which makes the, the I mean, movie a lot of people dope. walk around with no sense so. <laughs> That was on time. That was on time. <laughs> that was on time. No, yeah, just to see like the way they live, the way they move about, how they fight and stuff like that. Like it's that like all that makes the show dope. Um and now it's like they're at a part point to where people really know like it wasn't an assumption that people can see. Cause like, you know, back in the day they say somebody's a witch, you could be killing somebody innocent. So there have been people who got killed who they say can see but really can't see. People who can see who are getting killed just because they can see. So it's just it's a lot going not a lot going on, but it's a really well dealt How would how would people show. all right. How would the people who can't see know that you can see? If my senses are trained to know how your body moves based on fight, like I could literally like if you I'm can listen about, to me seeing I can 
let me finish. I can listen to your voice, right? And know where you are and throw something at you. And if I, if, if that joint don't just smack you in the head or you like, you move or something like, hey, why'd you move like you was dodging what I Because I could hear really good and I heard the air pressure, like, you know what I'm saying? Because that's how good my hearing is. Nice try. <laughs> nice try. But it's like, well, how are we making proof of this? Nice try. I don't, watch the show. They have a lot of different ways. Of, watch the show. If I just stood still, like, could you find me? Huh? If I just stood still, could you find me? Yeah, well, no. If you stood still, no. But they would hear your breathing or they'd try to throw say, something. Like, I was just like... No, and there are some people who are smart enough that can see. Like the one girl, uh, Jason Momoa's daughter, she's mad thorough. Like she, she shoots arrows. She was just like, just like she... She does not like the people who are trying to kill the people who can see. Like, she's, why would you like people who are doing no, that? Like, what I'm saying is, like, there was an understanding of like she was young, she had a lot of fear, but now she's at the point to where she's super frustrated. So there's like a scene where she's fighting a bunch of people to stop them from killing someone who can see. The dude ends up getting burned anyway because she can't get to him. But as she's getting pulled out by her friend so that they don't get jumped, she's screaming, I can see you. I can see all of you. And don't worry, I'm coming back. As the girl's pulling her away, she's like, I can literally shoot arrows into this town from 100 miles away and they would never know what happened to them. I was That's what like, I'm saying. It seems like very like I can avoid this pretty easily. Yeah, I mean. Because I can see you. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, but it's kind of like, you know, I mean, judgment. I mean. Like some people have integrity, and I'm not just gonna go around murking people the way other people murk. It's, it's a lot. I but understand you, that, but what I'm saying is like, but you go around murking people, so like I can murk you because you murk people. Yeah, it's yeah. like a little Dexter Morgan. Yeah, and it's getting to that point to where the people who can see are getting fed. I had enough. Yeah, but it's, it's not a lot of them. I mean, you gotta think a hmm. million people who can't see against ten people who can. What does that sound like? Mm. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, you know this man's on his, in his bag today. <laughs> Let me get to some stuff he watched before this, he start walling on me. All right, let's go to House of Dragons. Okay, so before I feel like we have to, so you you watched the two episodes. Yes. Last night mm -hmm. the third episode came out. Yes. I have not watched it. I'm watching it tonight. It is apparently so I, the this highest is my life. rated. I'm episode. watching a movie with wifey. Then I'm watching House of Dragons, and then I'm listening to JID while I do some work on my computer. There you go. Yeah. I um. So as I was trying to say, is this episode is is the highest rated episode of the season. Okay. It is already got a nine point nine on IMDb. That is higher than some of the best Game of Thrones episodes, like the Battle of the Bastards. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the one where it's like the I think it's like the Battle of like Winterfell. I okay. think it's called where it's like the one where all the White Walkers uh, get bodied and then like the Night King like rises Rise them back, back up. up. Yep. And then there's another one the like Red there's. Wedding? No, there's like a few. He said no. The, no, because like in the red I think, I'm pretty sure the Red Wedding is like a ten out of ten. Right. Like there's there's a few Game of Thrones episodes where they're just like, like it's, it's really hard to beat them. This. Yeah. But like for this episode of House of Dragons to be, like what like one of the five best episodes of like this entire franchise. And they just getting started. That's a lot of high praise. It's just getting started. Um. So I think I you think, were right about what you said though, which makes it easy to judge this episode is the fact that it kind of just brings you right back to Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. Like, it's called House of Dragons, but you don't feel like it's House of Dragons. You just yeah. feel like you're right back in the Game of Thrones realm, and this is, like, something that's happening somewhere else while this stuff is happening, even though it's, like, predating Game of Thrones. If I'm not mistaken, last time that we had talked, you hadn't watched any of the episodes. No. Right? Right. Um, so, like, I guess, like, we could kind of get a little spoilery, spoilery sure. right now. We could talk about it. Or I should, I guess the question I should ask is, how much have you enjoyed it so far? I enjoy it. I'm definitely enjoying it. It feels, like I said, it feels like I'm watching Game of Thrones again with new characters and it's super, like, refreshing because I don't have to, like, expect that this person is going to do something or I know how this person is going to act or I know this character. Like, it's building all new relationships with the people on the show. So, it's like, you don't know which ways things are going to go. Like, if you take, like, an Arya Stark, you're like, all right, I know she's going to be mad tentative. It's going to take a while for her to grow into her character. But there's a little girl in the show, and she's like, nah, I'm not waiting for nothing, fam. I'm riding dragons. I'm trying to make decisions. I can be a prince, even though I'm a princess, if you if you want me to. Like, I'm ready to rule. Yeah. And I'm even going to show up to places I'm not supposed to be and make grown man decisions. So Just so you know, Arya Stark was not doing stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's pretty dope to see where the show can go just based on the characters they have. Okay. Um... So, like, I feel like the second episode, like, we kind of deal with, like, a part of, like, royalty or just, like, the, the time period mm -hmm. that, like, we don't really talk about very often where it is, like, the big age difference mm -hmm. between, like, having to take a wife. Yes. And it's, like, yes. they really did not shy away from, like, the whole, like, 
and I and I like the fact that like he was a bit repulsed by it like as mm-hmm. well like where um, it's like yo this girl was like twelve years old right and I'm like right. a forty to fifty year old man right and it's like and it's even crazier that the dads are like you need to go holler at the king. And that the dad doesn't have a wife. You need to make have a conversation with this. You're guy. talking about the white girl. I'm talking about like the little black girl. Yeah. Like at first, like yeah. where it's just like he had a conversation with a 12 year old. I was like, I need you to watch, go tell this man that like you okay, and then like you'll right. wait two years before you give him a kid. So right. it was like that's a whole wild exp- right. like expectation to have all some stuff. Right. And it was like like I said, I was like I'm glad that he was like a, like they showed him being like repulsed by it. Like granted, like the white girl's still very young, but like I don't think we ever talk about how old she is. Right, but she is like the same age as his daughter, like, or at least they make it seem that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, like friends, yeah. But it's like we're seeing like the politics of it, and I feel like as I'm watching it, I'm I guess like we're just trained in Game of Thrones this way. Like we speak Game of Thrones really well, where it's like mm-hmm. I can start to see how these things are going to move. Yep, and it's just like the, these these conversations that you haven't met because that's as much as Game of Thrones is about like the spectacle and like these fights and these battles and these big things. The conversations are what matter in politics. Game of Thrones. And it's just like the way it's more, it's less about what you say or how you choose to say something. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, yo, like this is going to come to play. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, uh, her G checking her uncle on the bridge. Yep. I was like, you already know this yep. going to come back, but it's like, yep. Um, yep. <laughs> but I still think my favorite so far. And like, granted we're only two episodes in is like when the King had to make the decision about like oh. a baby. Because I was like, and this was is the wrong decision. Because I was like, this is the most Game of Thrones thing. Because like, these are the oh. these are the moments and these are the choices that write your character for the rest of the show. Because oh. it's like either the mistake or the choice that you make, like you have to live with that. Oof. And it's like now look at all the stuff that's happening because you made this decision. You right. could have still had your wife and no kid. Right. But I was like, because you chose the way that you chose to go, right. you didn't get either. Right. And it's like now you're you're sitting here talking to a twelve year old right. about like being with you or being with her for the rest of your life, trying to unite right. houses and whatnot. Right. Right. Which is out of control. And you were right. I did thoroughly enjoy the the Night's Tale scene that they had. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty dope scene. That was a pretty dope scene. Especially when he you checked him on the bridge too. He was like, Yeah, last time I remember it was like I had you I got like, you off your horse. Yeah, I got you off your horse, fan. Stop playing with it. Stop playing with but it. Man. I, We've been through this already. I was like this man is also too young and good looking. I was like, you will get bodied real quick, my boy. Like I was just like, you were real thorough in these fight scenes, but I was like, they're going to do if you. Don't, you if, if you don't get burned to the point to where you're not handsome, get some type of egg, egg, uh, inconsiderate scar or your eye gouges out, you're not staying. Lose a long. lose an arm, do something, yeah, something. Or or he, be, he needs stuff. to go find uh, a <laughs> is it is it Reyna Targaryen? That's her name. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, this is mine now. Right, 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 <laughs> like, right, like, this is the only thing right, keeping me safe right, right now. It's like, right, like, this is your I can't control. believe they had that man on the front lines. You know, I was just like, right, oh, mind, man. You, mind you, this man even looked like he had on like a Versace night suit. <laughs> like everybody's shoes are dirty <laughs> and, and dirty. This joint is super. Like when the light hit, it was like bling. <laughs> I'm like, man, where did you get this from, Fendi? Yeah. You don't look like you've been in no war. Yeah, I mean, it was like, I mean, it was like last time I remember, I threw you <laughs> off your horse. I'm like, man, he's not intimidated by that. You see, he horse, got his, he got his joint, man. right? He got his joint tied back, like I'm ready to go. <laughs> you man's over here throwing a bang over. Yeah, he had that dragon egg and stuff like that. He's like, you're here for the egg, right? Yeah, right. He's like, yo, come Bro, grab it. And I was like, I thought he was about to I, drop I sat there. Egg. I was like, yo, don't grab that egg. I was like, mm-hmm. do whatever you do. Do not try to grab yeah. that egg. I felt like he was gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> make like a Flintstone egg or something. Like, this brother's disrespectful, and I didn't know he had a dragon. Yeah. Oh, apparently there's nine dragons on here. So like, I a did bunch not. Of I, no, I knew that. I just didn't know he had a dragon. Come on now, fam. That bro, that joint came flying around and sat up like behind him. I was like, I'm thinking it's Shorty's dragon. Yeah. And then she comes flying through with her little mini dragon. I was like, yo, the dragon ought to get smacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that man dragon was sitting there looking like a bully pit bull. Yeah, really yeah. was. She came through with a little, little. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, this joint about to get real, fam. It's about to get real. But the thing is, I also like their relationship, like the uncle and niece thing. I feel like they're the only ones being real with each other. Yeah, he's I mean, being super forward about him wanting to be king yeah. and how they played him and how everything's going wrong for his brother. So it's fair that he should be stepping into kingmanship um of course there's the way he's going about it is completely wrong yeah but he's being honest and upfront about how he feels and the daughter is being the same way and i think that's why they have a good relationship because they completely understand each other because um not anything against the father but she's kind of going through the same thing that the brother's going through she's just not reacting the same way so they have a connection it's pretty dope yeah. I think we could leave House of Dragons for there until yeah, we watch yeah. this. Uh, we watch this for the next episode. Definitely. 
All right. Now, um, next up is She-Hulk. <laughs> so, so you still have, so watched I have it. not watched it, and like the internet has given me a reason not to watch it even more. Like, are you, like, are you being for? You're gonna be one of those too? I'm no, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to watch it because this it's part of our content. No, but what but I'm saying like, is like, you're like one of those when people. I geared myself up to watch the couple episodes that I hadn't missed, they were like, Megan Thee Stallion is twerking with She-Hulk. I'm like, I don't. I'm, I thought it was I hilarious I, as I, I watched it. I hope Meg so. Thee Stallion was in the, the episode, and I was like, Megan Thee Stallion is hilarious. They did say she, they did say, they, got the Joels. They did say she did very well. Yeah. Like they were um a lot of the people who were like the actors and the directors, they were like they were worried about her coming in and acting weird because she's a big star or not knowing how to act because all she does is rap. And they said she came in and was hilarious and settled right in and just made it that much easier for them to shoot that episode. Yeah, so. she came right from P Valley to She Hulk. You know she's in P Valley too. She did she did a feature in P Valley. Gotcha. And it was it was fire. So is she, is she gonna be a normal fixture in the show or she was just like a like one of those random episodes? I'm trying to like not give away spoilers for P Valley for okay. people who have not watched it, but I think no, not P Valley. I'm talking about She Hulk. No, because like, all right. So like, I guess I kind of get to give a synopsis of what She Hulk is for the most part. I thought you did that already. I did, but it's just like she just happened to be a client that uh, she was representing, mm-hmm. or there was a so they live in the MCU. So like, mm-hmm. there's someone. Uh, I believe it's like a fairy from like New Asgard. Okay. Who it was impersonating Meg the Stallion and like finessed this guy out of like hundred seventy five thousand dollars. So like, there's the scenes where the girl, the fairy girl, is Meg the Stallion. So you get Meg the Stallion there, but then Megan the Stallion actually shows up to the court case mm. and like you know she's like there's only one Meg the Stallion. Ah. They do like her like her whole thing of like whatever. Um, and then like you know she winds up telling She Hulk that the way that she handled the case like she was like I kind of want you to be my lawyer. Mm-hmm. I don't think she's gonna be in here again. Like I think mm-hmm. that we just got the moment. Mm-hmm. But it's like I don't know the torque scene is like pretty funny. It was like because like the so I guess the main actress for She Hulk I, I really need to figure out what this woman's name is. Go ahead, keep is, talking. In real life she's a huge Meg Thee Stallion fan. Okay. So like she didn't even know that Meg Thee Stallion was gonna be on the episode and they purposely didn't tell her. So like when she got there. Um, and they were just like, oh, yeah, this is you're going to be working with Meg Thee Stallion this episode. Like, she was fangirling out, so they were giving her, like, some space to fangirl with her. And I was like, oh, so she twerked out with Meg Thee Stallion. That sounds amazing. Tatiana Ma- Maslani? That's her? Yeah. I'll tell you, that is her. No, I believe you. But, yeah, what you got? Um, I think what you got, like, I people are going, like, way too crazy about it. Like, overall, and it's like, it seems to be, like, these, like, these super bros that are just against this show because of like all the female stuff with it. So like mm-hmm. one of the big things that people were beefing about is in the first episode, there's this conversation that she has with the, with Bruce Banner, the Hulk, mm-hmm. And he talks and like, he's trying to tell her like how to suppress her anger and all this other stuff. And she gives like this big uh, speech about like, I have to hold my emotions in all the time. She's like, I get, I get cat called, I get uh, mansplained, I get all this other stuff. He's like, after all that, like I've just learned how to channel my anger because like if I don't, then I'm seen as a bitch. I'm seen as this. I'm seen mm-hmm. as that. And people were just like, oh my god, like here comes the 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 feminazis, and they're talking about like, all this other stuff or oh, whatever. That's a thing. Yeah, like this is oh, like a hear, big thing. Is people, some people anything. were trying, to, were saying that like that it's whack. It's like you're gonna sit here and tell the Hulk that. Um, like how you control your anger better, but it's like that's how it is in the comics too. Like in the comics, She Hulk is She Hulk like ninety percent of the time. Like she doesn't really transform back into her other self like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and like the Hulk character himself, and one of the reasons why he is the Hulk is like there's a massive amount of childhood trauma that goes along with the Hulk, mm-hmm. and like what and like the Hulk is a representation of this trauma and this rage that he has. But She Hulk is gotcha. not, and She Hulk is not like that like she is almost like the opposite where like she hulk is this tall statuesque beautiful confident strong woman that the original jennifer walters like is not Mm -hmm. and it's like so like she doesn't really have to struggle like with that like in the comics now they're starting to kind of make that a thing where it's like now she has like hulk outfits where Mm -hmm. she gets like a lot stronger and like she becomes like a little bit more mindless of that but like for like a majority of she hulk's comic book run 
that was never really an issue for her. And that's why she was never as strong as the Hulk gotcha. and things like that. But she's smarter. She's faster. She's like all this other stuff. Gotcha. But I don't know. Like people were just like are finding reasons to be outraged and they're finding they're really nitpicking a lot of the MCU stuff now because like a lot of people just haven't liked where the MCU has been going. Mm-hmm. So like they're trying to find like what's the thing about She-Hulk so that way we could stop watching MCU stuff. Gotcha. And I feel like I don't think it's really justified. I think She-Hulk has been very fun. Um, and like that's kind of like the best thing is because like that's also what She Hulk comics are like. Mm-hmm. Like she's I don't want to say Deadpooly like where he's like she's super slapsticky, but like her comics are a little bit more fun because like she deals with like the B to C list villains who are getting sued by people or like they're trying <laughs> to sue other uh, other heroes and stuff like that. And like she for she breaks the fourth wall. We get to see her like dating and doing like, all that other stuff because mm-hmm. it's like oh like imagine trying to date as like a big green like monster i guess but it's just a big green woman but it's like mm-hmm. you know it's it's a, it's a lot of stuff like i actually have very much enjoyed this show so far for the first three episodes and i think it's definitely worth a watch okay imagine finding out that she's pregnant and be like i just got to draft this d1 athlete before he turns two <laughs> <laughs> and that boy urban meyer showing up to the christening <laughs> hey how you doing how you doing how you doing oh he's already four feet huh it's only four months man yeah. shake my hands son. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last but not least, we had oh, where can you watch you up? Disney Plus. Got gotcha. you. Marvel show, no? Well, Got gotcha. you. All right. Um, and last but not least, we have rap stuff. Okay. You see, you're not gonna say it for me one time? No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you don't have to. I I gobbled this show up in like three days. I yes. thought the show was awesome. I thought the finale was awesome. Yes. The whole show yes. is dope all the way through. Yes. Issa Rae, you did it again. Money. I'm telling you, I'm telling you watch, watch Insecure, man. Like watch if you bang money. with if you bang with rap shit, you're gonna love Insecure. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I also am almost a hundred percent sure that I'm obsessed and in love with the main character of the show like i'm like i, I like my she brother's on my nerves like, <laughs> she gets I, on my like nerves. I watch it with my brother and like whenever some like certain things happen like he'll just like look over and i'll be like like right like, right, like that he'll be like yo you good over there and i'm like yo i don't like she just a hundred percent just like does it for me like she, yeah like, her character like, gets on my oh like nerves. personality wise like it's like some of us out there but I'm talking, it's oh, you're talking about in real life yes I, like, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, beyond yeah. physically yeah. attracted to the big character like, I'm just like, well, ah. we'll hashtag your name <laughs> in the comments and see if she hits you up he was like you follow her on IG and I was like I don't want to go down that road man. <laughs> I was like, I was like if I follow her on IG like I was I don't want to be that guy so I'm gonna start sending fire emojis I'm gonna like yeah. The DMs like in the middle of the night is like, you know, I was just thinking about you. Like, I, I really like when you went off script that's your performance. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> I don't the bars to fly. I don't need I don't need that. So like I'm trying to like restrain myself. But, like I guess I'll just wait for season two. Do we want to talk about or get spoilery into like what's going on? Sure. Really? Um, I feel like we we've talked about the gist of the show already. Yeah. So basically she's a struggling artist mm-hmm. trying to become a rapper. Yep. Currently working at a hotel. She has a friend who does like a lot of OnlyFans and stuff like that to try to, you know, make ends meet, whose boyfriend is also a record producer. Um, and they end up forming a group together. They pop for a little bit and then they fizzle out. And then the season ends with them like really getting on. Kind of getting on. Kind of getting on. Yeah, where it's just on, like. They're going on tour. They're, they're almost like they have to go. Like the route for their fame that they wanted to go down, it's like the least appealing route to get there, but it's like what they have to do to get to where they want to be. Like they're working with the producer that they don't want to, they're working right. with the, the white rapper girl that they don't want to. Right. But it's kind of like what they need to do. They got the and, manager girl. Is, like they, they is it me them. or is, does that producer remind you of Smart Guy? He does. It's not him, but it's <laughs> I know like, it's not him. But he does. But when I first saw him, I was like, wait a minute. But they, you want to talk about casting? Cause I was like, this dude looked like a bitch, and I was like, he looked like, and I said like, oh, yo, yo, am I, I wrong? Your name, man, but you can come on, we'll be your guest. I ain't I said wrong? that in a while. <laughs> I ain't, come on the show, we'll be your guest. Yeah. Am talk, I wrong? Talk about it. Talk about I'm just it. saying, like his looks and like the way that he talks, <laughs> like he looks like a a dude that other dudes don't respect immediately. <laughs> So it's just like, oh, you a sucker, bro. Like, like, or like you look like you do underhanded stuff. Yeah, keep going. I That's keep all I'm saying. It's like I'm just saying, casting wise, like he looks yeah. the part. Yo, yo, that is hilarious, fam. That is hilarious because I was thinking the same as that. <laughs> yo, I'm like, yo, if yo, so the show, the show is called Rap Shit, right? Yes. So it's about these two female rappers. Yes. 
the music that they make is incredible, bro. Like, I think I'm going to get, like, I'm going to listen to some of these tracks. Like, the Seducing they Scheme. Re- they could release an album. The, the, the Seducing Scheme is a, it was a fire song, but, like, the one where they did the, the Nanaga beat, mm-hmm. and they watched him with the Trina beat. I was like, yo, like, you got, I was like, I was legit, like, I was like, yo, these bars and everything else, I'm with it. Right, right in the raps. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't even thought about that. Good question. Good I wonder question. if, I wonder if the main, is Shauna? Mm-hmm. Shauna and Mia, those are the two main characters. Shauna and Mia. I'm wondering if Shauna actually does write the rhymes, or if like they just have, uh, what you call it, like a, a rap writer. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean they got a script writer, but that doesn't necessarily mean. Who's your Who's your favorite character in the show? Oh, man. Uh. It's tough. I know who mine is off rip. It's tough. I, well, we know who yours is. No, she's not my favorite character. Oh, no? No. Oh, okay. My I, boy Maurice. If I, who's Maurice? The dude that she works with. That she let slide up in there. The and, scammer? Yeah. The scammer dude. <laughs> That's <laughs> the Haitian sensation, bro. Every move that he makes, I'm just like, this brother is textbook. I was like, I love it. He's killing it, bro. Like, <laughs> Yo. Um, when it was in that hotel in the robes, I was like, yo, this man is like, this is this is a script. Like, I've seen smooth. this before. He's smooth. Yeah. I don't think I got a favorite character right now. No? Nah. What about Walmart? Nah. Who's that, the producer? Yeah. Yeah, if I had Maybe to pick Paul. it between it'd be between him and Mia. So you just like so that's your favorite plot point yeah. is like their whole relationship. Yeah. Cause that's what Issa Rae does is she writes relationships very like real. Mm-hmm. Like cause like and like everything like feels lived in her, yeah. feels and like this side of people would act. And and like the reason I'm probably picking him over her just currently because of the wild move she made towards the to, in that finale phase. But is she wrong? Huh? Is she wrong? Is she right? So for her personally, yeah. That man just pulled like out like. But if you about to get on, who cares about his money? You was over here. You like, might be getting on. Everything is in the is what we call it. It might be because then with the way that it ended, we might not be going on this tour. Yeah. I also have a theory that I don't think that they're coming for her. I think they're going to ask her questions about Maurice. Like I don't think that they know that she's involved. Nah, in nah, nah. I don't think she's going to get arrested at all. Because if she does, it the show is over. Not over, it's, but it's just like, where do you go from here? Unless you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I got locked up from scamming. I was now gonna I got say it, her street I got even up. more bars now. Yeah, like I was, I was behind bars. Like <laughs> right, right. So I don't know. I mean, it worked out when Mia slapped old girl. So. We didn't even talk about her her whack ass uh, boyfriend, Cliff. Oh yeah, he's yeah he's corny. He was, he was sucking the whole time. Yeah, right? He was he, he yeah, like skin dude's a bad name, man. He he was a the prototype. No, when you're in a prototype argument, emotional no, R and B dude. Fellas, this fellas. man went on. Fellas. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't ever, ever like you want to talk about like some whole behavior. Don't post your scar. Don't ever be in an argument with your girl on IG live. Like you know how how stupid you look being like, yeah, say it for the live. Tell them about how you was on. Brent Fire, yes. It's like, yo, bro, you like th- this is supposed to be making her look crazy. It's only making you look more crazy. And that's like, what his homies like were telling them in the show. Yeah. That's what his homies were telling them in the show. And he's like, yo, your mom's on the phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, you just didn't want to listen. But, uh, why? Uh, but it's why. But I think Rap Shit is definitely a must watch. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's fire. Do you have anything else you wanted to hit on there? Or are we moving on? Um, nope. So it looks like here it says. Um, during the late night with Seth Meyers, Issa spoke about the artist who helped her pen the original songs for the series, which includes acts such as Pineapple City, uh, Incognita, and Drizzy. I know who Drizzy oh, is. Oh, Drizzy. Drizzy. There you go. I know who Drizzy is. Drizzy is nice. Yes. It's in Dreamville. Huh? It's She's Dreamville. in Dreamville. And she had that fire joint with, uh, with what was it, with Six Black and Kodak Black? It's just Black. Huh? Just black with a six, right? Yeah, yeah my bad. Which he should have known better. Like people are gonna call you six slack, bro. When you when you when you spell your name like that, that's how it's gonna go. Yeah, for real. But yeah, that, that there you go. I don't know if there's like this whole a whole article. So, but, all right, but like, what's up? That's pretty dope. We got real rappers on there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but if we got nothing let's say, like, what, what are we moving on to? Uh, we are moving on to popcorn poppy. Don't stop, pocket, pocket. All right, we got two things on the docket. I'm watching one later. It's already on 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 cue. Okay. Um. Do you want to start with that one, or do you want to start with the other one? Which one you want to start with? It honestly doesn't matter. I just go with the one I watched first. All right. Um, so we'll go three thousand years of longing. All right. So I watched hell. <laughs> I watched two movies in the theaters. Uh, I feel like I've heard of this before. 
It is the, the best way to describe this because no one ever knows what the movie is that I'm talking about until, like I say, it's the Idris Elba genie movie. It's the movie where Idris Elba plays oh, a genie. Oh, gotcha, so gotcha. Yeah, so, this, going to see this movie. so this movie stars uh, Idris Elba and Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton plays a... I feel like Idris Elba was just bored one day, like, you know what? I should start what doing if I fought, What if I fought a lion and then uh, I gave three wishes to white women? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just come up with that? Yeah. <laughs> Like, yo, beat. yo, yo, this man is on fire today, bro. <laughs> Give it to me one more time. He's <laughs> like, what if I fought a lion and I just gave three wishes to a white woman? I'm clipping it. Yeah. I'm but, clipping it. But, um, <laughs> so. I'm so sorry. So, Tilda Swinton, um, who I think most people know she plays yo. the ancient one in the Doctor Strange movies. Like, that's what she's most known for, I guess. Who? She's a. To the ancient one, the woman who teaches Doctor Strange, the bald one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She has a lot of other roles, but I think, like, her most widespread role is probably that one. Mm -hmm. Um, But she plays, I don't even know what to call her career. Like, I don't know if she's, like, an archaeologist or, like, what it is, but, like, what she does is, like, she studies ancient civilizations and, like, more specifically, the stories from different um civilizations and like kind of like to see the connectivity and all this other stuff okay she winds up finding um a lamp Mm -hmm. which in prison inside this lamp is Idris Elba Mm -hmm. who um is actually not a genie he is a djinn which is like a a form of demon um but it's like is this not a comedy it's not a comedy it's a it's a pretty serious like they take it pretty serious Really? Yeah. So like that's it's like a suspense movie or something? so. No, it's not that. So like that that was my thing about this movie. I feel like the way that the trailers for this movie or like the way that this movie was marketed, mm-hmm. you would think it would be like a bedazzled or like any of these movies where it's like, oh, I found a genie. Like now we're gonna do these wild hijinks until I make my wishes. And like it's not that. And I like definitely thought you was on some Shazam type stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kazam. <laughs> what? Kazam. Cause, Check. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Cause in, my bad. Um, but like, it's not that. So when Adris Elba is released from his uh, imprisonment, uh, like you know, he, like his whole thing is he's like, you need to make these three wishes so that I can become free. But she is very, very well versed in like stories, and she's like, and she calls him like right off the rip. She's like, you're not even a genie, you're a jinn, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And he's like, well, I didn't even know that you knew what a jinn was, and mm-hmm. she's like. I've read so many stories from so many things like that. Like every story that I've ever read about wish wish granting or everything is always a cautionary tale. Mm. So she's like, I personally don't want to make any wishes. And he's like, no, like you need to make wishes or else I'm going to be stuck in here again. Like I've been stuck in here for 3000 years, 3000 years of longing. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so like, he's just like, she's like, I just don't understand like why it's so important to you. So like what the movie actually is, is him trying to convince her to make her wishes so that way he can be released. So in doing that, Idris Elba is telling the story about how he became imprisoned in this bottle in the first place. And like, so you're seeing a lot of the other people that have made wishes and like what people wish for and like how he ended up in the predicament that he's in. Cause like what happens is it's like a lot of people don't make their third wish and it's because their first two wishes are so poor or um, a, a big um thing about this thing is just love in general it's like he's had people um that like through their wishes or through their wants and through stuff like that like he falls in love with them as well and like that's his problem as a jinn is he keeps falling in love with people and like it starts um like the first time that we see him or like recorded is like he's in like ancient egypt and he falls in love with queen shiva Mm -hmm. but then like she's being courted by king solomon who's the, the person who originally um, traps him in there because like he's very into like the mystic arts like all this other stuff or whatever mm-hmm. but like he sees Idris Elba as uh, a hurdle in him getting Queen Shiva mm-hmm. and he's right so like that's how he imprisons him and like that's how it all starts mm-hmm. um, I think the idea of this movie and like the themes of this movie are very interesting I don't think it's the most entertaining of movies mm. um, I mean because you were selling it I was like that's what I'm saying. it's like Idris Elba is an amazing narrator because, like, he's narrating these stories and, like, the way that he talks, like, I'm just like, yo, like, like I'm in on, like, a lot of the stuff. But it's, like, there's not really, like, a lot of things that are going on that's, like, super duper interesting. But, like, I think the 
the end all be all like encapsulating thing of like what they're trying to say is like when it comes to wishes or like the desires of people it all always just boils down to like love mm-hmm. um even when you wish for a lot of money or if you wish to be more attractive or if you wish to be these things you're doing this at a place because like you think the person that you love would want these things so you want them to like love you mm-hmm. and it's just like you know uh tilda swinton's character is like she's a divorcee she had i think she has like some sort of um disability which like this like kind of like asperger's which kind of like the like disconnects her um like in relationships and stuff like that mm-hmm. so like you know kind of trying to explore that with her like trying to get her to understand like these things like as well um i think the people's wishes were interesting and like you know like i said Adris Elba, like talking to him or like you feel like you feel for him mm-hmm. when like he's like all i need this person is to make this third wish and it's like they don't make it and you're just like oh bro like this mm-hmm. sucks um, but there's also like this piece of it where like Tilda Swinton says like it like she's just like you're a gin. Gins are tricksters or like they're this. So like there's this level of like, is he playing her mm-hmm. so that way he can get free because he wants to do something like that's not good or like all right, this other right. stuff. So like you're always trying to figure out like at the same time you're like, oh man, like that sucks for are him. You like genie I understand. Or are you Jafar? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, type of deal. <laughs> so like she tries to like in the very beginning, she's like, she's like, yo, I don't want these wishes. And like he's just like, no, like I need them so I can be free. She's like, okay. Like, I wish that I wasn't thirsty. She takes like a drink. I wish I wasn't hungry. I wish I wasn't this. And he's just like, you're insulting me. He's like, you, he like wow. he's like, you can't, it, like, your wishes need to be of, like, true desire or these things or, like, else it won't work. He's mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? But it's like, so, like, it, it was tough putting it on the nasty scale. Ugh. Because, like, I was I've like. I've heard that before. Because, like, I was like, I don't know where this goes because, like, I don't think people should pay money to see this movie. Like, is that if that's the best way to put it? Like, I feel like if you were to be like to get a group of friends and be like, we're going to the movies and like this was on there, like, I don't think that it's good for that. But it's like, I feel like if you were to watch this and it was like on Peacock, Netflix, or anything like that, and it was just like, oh, like I got to kill some time. And it's like, you watch it, it was like, oh, like it's a pretty interesting way to think about things. Like, it'd be solid in that sense. Mm-hmm. So, like, if we're going by the scale, which is full price, matinee, uh, $5 Tuesday, Redbox, stream, skip it. Mm-hmm. I think it falls on this, wait till it hits a streaming service. Okay. But it's like, it's not to say that the movie itself is like that. It's just not entertaining enough to warrant your money. Your money. That you're not already paying for this, the streaming service or whatever. But I'd much rather my time than my money. I think me talking about the movie is like almost a little bit more ent- entertaining than the actual movie than itself. Wow. Uh, so once we once we hop off, you can tell me how it ended, and I don't have to watch it. On either. <laughs> All with, right, with, <laughs> it, this is a bit of a spoiler. Okay, so I was just like, now any woman who uncorks this bottle and a GD that comes out that looks like a Dries elbow, <laughs> you'd be like, this girl's gonna bang this GD. She bangs the genie. <laughs> I was just like, yeah. can't be mad at her about it. I was just like, uh, like they try to make it like a little bit more like why she wants to do it is like, oh, I just want to, I want to feel what that love is like. It's like, I know what you want to feel. <laughs> like, I feel that Stringer Bell. <laughs> yeah. Not the wire. <laughs> she wanted the beast. Not the wire. <laughs> and you got it. <laughs> Oh man, that's such an odd couple too. It's it is, like it's it's even weirder on screen. Like when it actually happens, because the thing is, like when he first appears, he's like the size of an entire hotel room. Mm-hmm. So he has to like shrink himself down, mm-hmm. like and stuff like that. And like when he shrinks himself down, he's still like seven feet tall. <laughs> and it's like she's like five foot five. So like when he's like embracing her, it's like this is like a little bit uncomfortable. But yeah, at the same, set. but at the same time, I get it. <laughs> like you know what I mean? the second movie that I watched. Mm-hmm. It was called Honk for Jesus to Save Your Life, or I can't remember like what the 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 subtitle. Save your soul. To save your soul. Just save your soul. Okay, Honk for Jesus, save your soul. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like filmed a bit documentary style. So like, the movie stars Sterling K. Brown, mm-hmm. um, who's probably widely known for playing Randall on This Is Us. Oh yep. Um, yep, yep. And then Regina Hall, not Regina King. Mm-hmm. Um, who plays his wife. Um, she's been in so many things. Like, she was in Girls Trip. She was mm-hmm. in um, Think Like a Man. Mm-hmm. I know it was one she, of those Kevin Hart movies. She recently had a Kevin Hart movie 
that just hit Netflix, um, Time Off. Dude, I can see that one. Him and him and the Mark Wahlberg movie. Oh, the one that just came out. Yes. Okay, yeah, I didn't she's see that one. That. Um, but I think she's. It's funny because like it's as far along it is. It's like I think she's more known for playing Brenda from the scary the scary movie movies, mm. the black girl. Mm. This is like a bunch of people. Like that's mm. probably what she's most known for. Mm. Um, her name obviously gets confused with Regina King all the time, but this is Regina Hall, yeah, not Regina King. Mm-hmm. So something very unsavory happened. So like uh, Sterling K. Brown runs like this uh, mega church in the South, mm-hmm. and he winds up getting accused of like misconduct and because of that they kind of like lose their spot in the spotlight so like a lot of their congregation is like kind of just like you know like wait well, hey, once they heard about the stuff like they kind of just separated from that mm-hmm. um some time has went by regina hall's character kind of like really wants to be back in that first woman spot like she's like like she like really adored and loved being like the like the almost like the right hand to this really charismatic man mm-hmm. who everybody like also was like you know infatuated with because like he's, he's the young exciting pastor like he's all this other stuff, stuff yeah she's first lady um so it's filmed like kind of documentary style of like their comeback of them trying to rise back up but at the same time there's this other church that's getting ready to come back out with this new young couple and they're the new hot young fresh married um couple and it's like their husband and wife pastor Mm -hmm. like that's like their gimmick is like they're both this like they're both pastors like Mm -hmm. she's just the what you call it or whatever first lady first lady thank you you. all right um she was also in death at a funeral which was a hilarious movie (laughs) that was yeah i guess that's a really random movie to bring up but yeah that was a pretty funny movie i was looking at everything that was on it i was like i really enjoyed this one (laughs) (laughs) but um yeah, so you kind of get to see, because, like, um, I got to be honest, too, we were a little bit late to this movie, so we missed, like, the very, very beginning. Mm-hmm. So, like, the whole movie, like, I'm trying to figure out what he did to get, because, like, they don't talk about it for, like, a long period of time. Mm-hmm. But then you start to see, like, what it was no and, like, spoilers, what happened. I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to say, like, okay, what it is. Sure. And you're just kind of like, oh, like, okay, like, I could kind of see, like, where you're at. And then it's like, but then you, you're always kind of like wrestling with yourself is like did he do it did he not do it mm-hmm. um but then like you're also seeing like this this aspect of like yes they are um they're people they're people of god like they're very spiritual they're all these other things but then it's like can you can you do that but then also love the vanity of it as well because like that's what it is it's like yes and like at the end of the day if um if all you really wanted to do was get closer to God, like you would just start to go to another church and just like, you know, repair your relationship that way. But it's like, mm-hmm. no, they really want to get this thing back because they miss being um, held in that high regard and all that stuff. So like you're, it's, it's almost like it's coming from like a disingenuous place. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like, you're like, that's kind of like the uh, crux of this movie is just like, is this okay? Like what they're doing? Because it's just like, you're almost not practicing what you preach. Right. Um, and, uh, um, you're doing it for your own glory. Yes. It's like, you're doing this for your own glory. And also just like the dynamics of their marriage in general, like as well, because like this thing that your husband is being accused of, it's like, are you supposed to be supportive? Like, you know, you, there, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Um, I think the movie was just like very okay. Okay. So like, um, did you watch this in theater? I did. I went okay. to the theaters and saw it. Um, it is now streaming on Peacock. Like I, I, the movie came out on Friday, and I believe Sunday they put it on Peacock, so you can see this movie for free. Mm-hmm. I recommend that. That's how you see this movie. I don't think that you need to go to the theater, the theaters to see this movie. Like um, Saturday was National Movie Theater Day, so mm-hmm. all movies were three dollars. The popcorns were oh, three dollars, right. right. and all that stuff like that. So like, I was kind of just like. I'm kind of glad I only spent three hours to see this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's entertaining and it's engaging, but I, I don't think – or it's engaging. I don't know if it's entertaining 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sterling K. Brown and Regina Hall are very good at act. Like, their acting is just awesome, like, in this movie, like, all the way through. Like, you can see um, – like all the dynamics that like like these characters seem very they work well together. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, these characters seem like characters. Like they seem mm-hmm. like real people because it's like you know they do have their good sides, they do have their bad sides, and then there's like they're a lot of two good actors too. Yeah, 
um, we talk about like a lot, like when we do like uh, heavyweight lovers and stuff like that, like, um, like a lot of the things like you don't like, like you don't say th these things to your wife, but it's just like, you're, you're not trying to be mean, but it's like, you probably shouldn't have said that or said mm -hmm. that like that. And it's like, you know, like how are the, like, and that's their whole thing is like, oh, but like, we're good people. We're good people. And it's like, but are you good people? Mm. And it's like, and like, what makes good people good people? Like, are you good people because like you believe in God mm -hmm. and like you preach His word? Mm -hmm. But then like, what about everything else? Like, right. you're not just good people because you do this. Right. So like that. So like, okay. If I was to put it on the nasty scale, I think it would be to wait till it's on streaming services, which it already is. And I'll be watching it tonight. <laughs> there you go. So I, it's on people. And I'm gonna text you right away and let you know how how I feel about it. Uh, definitely do. It looked entertaining though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it's like they do a lot of like they infuse like a lot of like hip hop into it. Like you saw the trailer was big timers still fly. Mm -hmm. and they came up, like mm -hmm. it's a lot of because like that's what he is. It's like he's he's the young hip pastor and stuff like that. He's doing like a lot of uh, like dances and like you know all this other stuff and like okay. they get into it. But I think I. I can't wait for you and your wife to watch it because like there's a lot of things that happen in there where you're just like, yo, this church is crazy, bro. Like, I, I don't know if I can be it. Oh, I'll keep you posted. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, on to my bad. On to oh, we got home cooking. Ain't nothing really there. It's nothing okay. really there. Oh Something wait, what? <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, I think we can save home cooking for next episode because I think there'd be like some bigger things to talk about at that point. Um, so we can go right over to the blitz. Right. Am I? Can I not do it? Because like you're making that face like I should have. Not go ahead, do you? Man, get out of my way! Watch out as I come through, busting in your line, cracking numbers in two. When I bring that pain, that what you're gonna do? So lace up your cleats up, get shook out your shoes, clean out your locker. I'm out to get you. It's the Blitz. <laughs> I kind of like it now. <laughs> a Sports. It's in the game. We're not paying you <laughs> We're not paying you up for that. Um, so, first things first. I pop up. You so the honey. It's been a while. Yeah, it been yeah, been while. You, been Before we get it. to anything else. Okay. Wow. Shout out for you. Shout out for me. Ohio State had to play Notre Dame. Okay. First week of football. It was looking pretty dark. Mm-hmm. And then it got really light. <laughs> they say it's darkest before the dark. Yeah, hey, there you go. There you go. Um, we are ranked number two this season. Super hyped about that. And uh, CJ Stroud is, in imp impeccable fashion, going to be definitely a number one overall pick yeah, come draft most likely, next yeah, year. Like, I, I want the Raiders to do so well, but I also want them to have the first round pick so we can get <laughs> CJ Stroud. But I know we're out of the sweepstakes for what that. If they, what if they win the championship and then trade Derek Carr for the number one pick? I, I would – be elated. Like, I wouldn't <laughs> even know what to do with myself. I won't lie to you. Yeah, Josh Jacobs, Darren Waller, Devontae Adams, <laughs> CJ <you>. Stroud, and <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be able to talk to me on the phone. You wouldn't be able to talk to me. I tried not to. Uh, All right. Oh my <laughs> Aside from that, um, your your Florida State Seminoles looked pretty good against LSU last didn't night. Didn't watch the game. <sighs> didn't even watch the game. And the reason why I didn't watch the game is because all of the NFL rosters are now locked. Yes. So now, like, what these teams look like, it's these teams, and it is fantasy draft season. It so, is. like, I had, like, four drafts to do yesterday. Mm. I just didn't get a chance to watch the game. Like, mm. I had people over. Mm. There was just, like, a lot going on. I know you've done quite a bit. How many leagues are you in? Well, listen. How many leagues are you in? Four. That's it? That's it. I did four drafts just yesterday. I'm keeping it light. I'm okay. keeping it light. I'm How do you like your team so far? I like all my teams. Is there someone that you have on all your teams that you're just like, if this if this person goes down, like it's, it's gonna be curtains for me. Um, I know I, when I saw some nah, of your rosters, there's a lot of Darren Waller I, stock. I, I, there's a lot of Darren Waller. <laughs> stock. A lot of Darren Waller. <laughs> it is a, Dar a lot of Darren Waller stock, uh, but for the most part, a lot of things are mixed up just based on the picks that I had. Um. But I definitely need Darren Waller to stay healthy, and I definitely need Cordero Patterson to have a good season because I, okay. I got him on a couple rosters as well. So, hoping, you know, but him and Marcus Mariota over there. <laughs> good luck with that one. I know, right? But um, I'm not disappointed in any of my rosters. We'll see what happens. Did you get the number one pick at any leagues? Like, I know you got number two in the Electric College. Just one. And who'd you go with? I went with Jonathan Taylor. 
Okay, all right. Yeah. I didn't know if he's going to pick my man CMC because I know you've been very, very I'm low on him. I'm never going to pick him. I'm sorry. If you had the number eight There's Nothing pick. against anybody, but an all-Caucasian backfield frightens me. <laughs> I don't – this <laughs> – They were calling him Derry Sanders, and it's one of my what? favorite nicknames for anybody. What? Derry Sanders. What? No. <laughs> no. No. You need to call him uh, – I don't know. Who's someone who – Dies a lot. <laughs> like, oh my God, Jesus! No, oh my goodness! <laughs> Forgive him, Lord. <laughs> Krilla. I'm talking about like, there you go. Call him Krilla. <laughs> Call him Goku because Goku dies more than anybody yeah, else. Yeah, but he don't get he don't get down like Goku, man. Like this dude's got glass bones and paper skin. He can't make it through a whole season. I cannot believe in picking this guy, man. I can't. I can't. He's... And you're gonna have to run and catch the ball a lot because. Baker Mayfield is not getting that ball down the field to nobody. I don't know. I, 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 I kind of believe in the Baker Mafia. That's what's up. I love that uh, there was like that interview. I think it was Robbie Anderson was on, not the pivot. I think he was on uh, I Am Athlete. Mm-hmm. And like he was talking wild crazy about Baker Mayfield, about how trash he was. And then like the next week he got traded to the Panthers. And I was like, well, there goes all of Robbie Anderson's touches. Facts. Facts. Oh, that's all right. Funnel all of them to DJ Moore. I'll take that. Crazy work. <laughs> What's that boy Lance Briggs? Crazy, more crazy. <laughs> yo, Shady, you, yo, listen, man, you need to patent that, man. Yeah, really, get honestly, some, yeah. Get some shirts that say "Crazy Work." Get, get. I mean, start your own podcast. Call it "Crazy Work." I'm, I'm just saying, man, that joint is that joint is on fire right now. So. I know, I know that we've kind of take like we're pivoting. Whoa! But like, did you Whoa. see the I Am Athlete interview when like they asked? I refuse like, to watch it. I refuse to watch it only because. Um, I like where Brandon Marshall has grown into, and I don't want to see him go back into that poor mental health ranting stage that he was in before he identified as needing help managing his life. Okay. And I just, I didn't, I didn't like to see it. Um, and I feel like everybody was for I am athlete when they were all together. And then when they broke up, people was kind of just not for I am athlete. And now with the rant, now everybody wants to be interested again. It's like, you just want to see this man in his, in his worst moment. Like he built something. I think he was and, also just lying. But there's that too. Nah, <laughs> that, is that too? Is that too? But I just, I just didn't want to see him like that, man. I didn't want to see him like that. You know, it's just, I just felt like, okay, it didn't work out. Y'all went y'all separate ways. Be happy for one another. There was no reason for him to even address it at all. Well, they, I feel like the episode was kind of designed for them to bring it up. Like, because, like, you know, you get Joe Budden on there, mm-hmm. who also had, like, a very famous uh, professional He divorce. was on I Am La- Athlete? Yeah. Like, that's a, it was a very intimate, it was, like, just, it was just Joe Budden, oh, man, Brandon Marshall, and I can't remember who the other person was, because like, I don't even think it was Chad. Mm-hmm. It was somebody else, and they were kind of talking around it. And then the producer, like, literally stopped them, like, in the middle. Like, he gets on there, he's like, yo. Like you guys are dancing around it. Like, if you're going to talk about it, talk about it. If you're not going to talk about it, like, don't talk about it. But he's like, this whole thing, he's like, this is corny. Like, if, if you're going to be here and you're going to talk about it, like, talk about it. And then that's when he did. Yeah. And Brandon Marshall, and as I, he I says, feel like Brandon Marshall does, as like, he says, he starts to lie. Me- he loves scene. to get messy. Right. And it got messy. I didn't. No, nah, I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to watch it. You are seesawing, like, man crazy on if you're going to watch it or not. I'm not. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to watch it. Watch Are you going to see Joe Budden talk about Rory or Maul? Nope. Uh, no, nope, because I already know what that is. I already know what that is. And their numbers is getting really close to Joe, too. So It's about that time. It's, it's definitely about that time. So, I mean, I just you know, I hope it works out for everybody, man. Like, this, these situations happen all the time. It's just like, this is what they want us to see. That This is what everyone wants to see. They want to see you build these great products and then fall apart and then say, see, you couldn't do it in the first place. So... Like, if you got something great off of something that was already great, then let's just keep building. You never know. In a, a month or a year or two years, all the guys on Pivot may have their own TV show. Like, you don't know how it goes. Like, if things – I don't want to see that Channing Crowder TV show. Because if it is one thing that I've learned from It's going to be all about nasty stuff. It's like, just, just Channing Crowder just all It's, it's going to be an audience for it. Yeah. <laughs> There's an audience for it. 100%. There's an audience for it, you know. But it's just like if something starts somewhere and it grows into something else, I don't see what's wrong with that. Like, we don't need to be – having any type of animosity for that we need to, you know what I mean support it I guess but the, I think the bad part about all these situations is that people aren't like you want to clarify it for the world and you want to clarify it for the podcast but you won't clarify it with the people that you had an issue with mm-hmm. like as long as I'm good with them I don't owe you no explanation straight like that and you you can tell people like hey listen everything's good if you have a question ask them ask me I'll talk about it off camera but like I'm not who was it um Meek Bill said it like um, this ain't Wendy Williams. I might not be out here in the streets talking about me, me and Nikki. You know what I mean? It's just right. like 
it is what it is. We went our separate ways. I'm going to keep doing me. They're going to keep doing them. Yes, if for every, any reason, heavyweight bros, like Joel told you, you need a bag, he out. <laughs> I'm not going to say, oh, my man left the heavyweight bros because he got the bag. I'm just like, I right, well. can't wait to sell out. <laughs> can't, can't that, that's wait. how you said it. That's can't how you said it. I hate to sell out. Listen, I just, I'll, talk about, I'll talk about you greasy the media too. Like, I'll be like, I'm, yo, I'm, I'm like, he's the illest sucker of all time. Meanwhile, your mortgage paid. Right. <laughs> right. I'll be like, like, yo, whatever gets your numbers out, fam. Whatever remember, gets your numbers remember out. Remember that interview where uh, Chameleon Air was talking about like he didn't realize why 50 Cent was beefing with him? Oh yeah, yeah 50 Cent. Oh, yeah. He was like, yeah, yeah, he blew it back, man. He blew it back, fam. That was your chance <laughs> to blow up. Everybody was waiting for it, and then you just backed off and you blew it. Yeah. And now yeah. look at you. <laughs> if there's if there's You could have had chameleon air verse. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, we would have been on book nine. Right, right. <laughs> Malik versus Tariq. Yeah. Two worlds collide. Yeah. You could have been on there. You blew it. Right. Had to beg and fumble it. Right. Well, uh, one of the reasons like why we talk about fantasy and all that stuff and why that stuff is important is because football, this is our this was our last Sunday mm-hmm. without NFL football mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. So it that actually also, starts this Thursday. It does start this Thursday. Three days away. It is three days away. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's the, a banger, too. It is a banger. It is. I, I feel like all of week one are bangers, but it is. they they're, they were really like, you know what? No, not all of it. There's a couple games out here. Where I like, mean, but you got to think, like, sometimes it's like split almost down the middle. Like, these are games I really want to watch. These other ones are like, nah. Yeah. I feel like there's like... 10 games that I really want to see. Yeah, well, that's what happens when there's, like, no bye weeks and every team has to play, though. You're right. You know what I mean? And it's also, like, it's the most exciting because no one knows what anybody looks like. Yeah. Is this person going to be trash? Like, is yeah. this person going to be good? Yeah. Is this the decline of this person? Is this the rise of this person? Mm-hmm. But oh, what, what comes so if you're you asked me earlier, my bad, you asked me earlier, if there's one person that I have stock in that I really want to see have a good season, it's my homie Chris Olave, man. Ohio State. You do have a lot of Chris Olave. I have a lot of Chris Olave. I have him on every single team in my league. You know that means you're relying on uh, Jameis Winston quite a bit, right? I believe the famous Jameis. Florida State. Just saying. Uh, I'm just. I know he will throw 40 picks to get 20 touchdowns. So that means he got to slang that thing. If anything, oh, because your other boys on that team. Who? Oh. Uh, what you call it? Michael Thomas. Oh yeah, because that means Ohio like, State boy. That's a, I'm, I'm, I know. Calm down. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> what I'm saying is like you got the the Michael Thomas touches, the Jarvis Landry touches, the mm-hmm. Chris Olave touches, mm-hmm. like the uh, Alvin Kamara touches. Like mm-hmm. it's a lot of mouths to feed in, in New Orleans. We're gonna be all right. They oh, we? That was a lot. Oh, we? Talking about Ohio State boys. Uh, Ohio State, right, not right. the Saints. Not uh, the Saints. I was, say, I was like, but yeah, I want to see Michael I was Thomas. Like, you went from a black and silver to black and gold. Oh, That's no, kind of no, crazy. No, no, no. I want to see Michael Thomas return to his, his his form of greatness where he was battling for number one receiver in the league. Well, he's got to get that trade stock. I really want to, yep. I really want to see Chris Olave have a great season. Um, I'm even really, uh, I want to see Garrett Wilson do really well for the Jets, too. So, okay. Like, those, yeah. All right. All right. But like, one of the reasons why fantasy is like you know like as as hype as we are for fantasy at the beginning of the season, it mm-hmm. also means another thing. Two minute drill is ooh, back. Ooh, ooh. So last last ooh. year, I wound up taking the two minute drill cup with me. Yep. Yeah. Um, I still have not, you know, uh, called up my tab for the roof, Chris. It's up to it's you. It's going to be coming. What you waiting for? No, it's coming. It's coming. All right. My question is like now because last time we when the podcast started, we were already in week eight. So we didn't even start from week one. Oh, yeah. So that means you're going to lose now. So does that mean? Got out of there. So I'm willing to mm-hmm. double the bet if you'd like. Because so there's like two roof, Chris? Yeah. We have two. We could have two dinners mm-hmm. of our choice at any restaurants. So like you could do your, your, your Friday night and Saturday night have paid for it by the person. I'm willing to go that high. My question is, how high are you willing to go? So two nights of dinner of our choice? You sure? You good? That our our choice is what's getting me. Why you say that? Like I'm not gonna like go to the Seattle Space Needle and make you pay for my flight right, okay, or nothing like that. Just making sure. Just making sure. Like wherever I decide to go to dinner, it's like I'm sending you the receipt and be like, cash it in. All right, I'm with it. I already got a spot that lined up that I sent a video to wifey about. I mean, that was the truth. Like I yeah. sent it to you too. Was it the that that spot in CT? Yep. Uh, I might be going there in the next couple of weeks, too. I'll let you know how it is. Hey. So, <clears throat> by the way, the dinners are dinners for two, too. But that was the thing. It was like you pay for you. For and 22 per- or for two? Like, for two. So, like, yeah. it's it's not just like if you and your wife are going out, pay for you and your wife. It's yeah. like dinner on, dinner on the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, first game. All right, so, we can take, like, a minute to talk about these games if we want. So, that way we could kind of breeze through these. Um, but, like, the first game on the schedule, which is Thursday night. 
is the Buffalo Bills mm. versus the L.A. Rams. Mm. I went with the Bills. You went with the Rams. Yes. Anything that you want to say about this well, game? Well, I went with the Rams, so it gave you the Bills. Don't act like you was confidently saying I wanted the Bills. I, but I did want the Bills. But yeah. go ahead. Okay, yeah. So it worked out for you. That's what I mean. It was like I love when that happens. They playing the champs, bro. It's their first game coming off a championship. Like, why would they not want to go? Like, if there's any game that you want to win, it's against a contender team that you could potentially see again this year if you stay on the same trail that you were on from last year. I know football is not a lot like basketball where you're going to see a team that continually keeps going because of the team that they have. Like, football is very up and down. You can have a Super Bowl team one year, have the same team, and not be a Super Bowl team the next year. So this is a statement game for the Rams to say, hey, listen, not only – did we get better? We stayed good. So. so how about this? We'll do 30 seconds about what you think about the Bills, 30 seconds about what you think about the Rams. Perfect. Ready? Uh, Bills, go. Uh, I think they're a very good contender team. I just think they're still young. They got good experience from last year, but they're playing the champs. Rams, go. I already did the Rams. Okay. <laughs> so second game on the docket was the New Orleans Saints versus the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. This was actually my first pick. That's I, an easy one. I went with the Saints, mm-hmm. which gave you the Falcons. Mm-hmm. Want to get 30 seconds on the Saints? I know we we kind of gushed about them a minute ago. Uh, Saints win. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to say about these Falcons, what their, their season outlook? Um, They have a young wide receiver core, yep. so I'm excited to see how that works out. I did want to see Marcus Mariota get the ball a little more in Vegas when Derek Carr was hitting his slumps. So this is an opportunity for him to show if he does still have something in the tank, and I'm excited for him. The weapons are there. The weapons you are there. You got Kyle there. Pitts. You got Drake London. You Drake got London, Cordell Patterson. You got Cordell Patterson. Um, who's their tight end? Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts. Yeah. Wait, then. Oh, yeah, you said Kyle Pitts. They have another wide receiver over there. Uh, it was Calvin Ridley. Oh, that's right. Mm, <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay. I think this is a year off for the Falcons, if, it, if, I, if I had to describe it at all. Yeah. Next, seven games. Uh, next game we had on there. No, he's out for the season, bro. No, no, I said they could win seven games. Oh, I don't know. They're in this, aren't they in the same division as uh, the Saints, Buccaneers, and oh, what's the other team that I'm missing? Panthers? Two wins off the Panthers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Five to go. Now, next game on the docket was the San Francisco 49ers versus the Chicago Bears. Mm-hmm. You went with the 49ers, which gave me the Chicago Bears. 49ers talk? Um, so they did resign Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's going to help for him to settle down and really focus more on football rather than where his career is going. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody should be back healthy. So I, I'm thinking the Niners are going to have a good season. Okay. Uh, Chicago Bears? On to the next. Okay. I just want to see Justin Fields do well, man. That's literally the only bright spot. I don't spot even know who Justin Fields is throwing to, bro. I know. It's like Darnell Mooney and Cole, uh, Cole I Komet. I know. Yes. I know. Yeah. I feel so bad for him. <laughs> The next game was the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Mm-hmm. You went with the Bengals, which gave me the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Um, anything on the Bengals? Yeah, it's going to be like Bengals playing Putnam. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll talk about the Steelers in a second. But, uh... I feel like, no, all right, so honestly, I think the Steelers are always going to be strong defensively, but offensively I don't know what they're bringing to the table. Like, I mean, they still got Deontay Johnson, got Najee Harris, got um, – uh, Chase Claypool, mm-hmm. um, what's her tight end, Fairmouth, mm-hmm. but then it's Mitch Trubisky throwing the ball. I guess right. the question is how much do you believe Mitch Trubisky, who's been playing Nobody, behind because every Pittsburgh Josh fan Allen. I talk to is already talking about the, the backup kid who, who's going to um, end up at. Pick, pick it? Yep. Can every, you pick it? People talk about Because the rookie, George Pickens, is another one that people have been really hyped on because yep. he was a, a star of the preseason. Yep, so everybody's already talking about the, the second string QB. The season hasn't even started yet. I like Najee Harris. But I think he's gonna have to carry too much of the of the load, which Literally. is gonna it was just gonna leave him banged up, and that forces Trubisky to have to throw the ball. He's gonna have some bad games, which is gonna force the switch. If it does happen, it's gonna be a dark season. And we have the Bengals who are just coming off of a Super Bowl appearance. It kind of is weird to say that. Yeah, because it should have been the Raiders. But we'll go on. There's nothing to say about the Bengals. That, that, that's all you got. I mean, I drafted Joe Burrow. My team is, uh, can I borrow a dollar? <laughs> the next game was the Eagles versus the Lions, where you selected the Eagles, which gave me the Lions. And yes. I'm actually very okay with that. But go ahead. Uh, thoughts on the Eagles? Um, young team, a lot to prove, and I think they're going to do so. I think the big question about the Eagles is, do you believe in Jalen Hurts? Yes. Okay. I uh, So we can talk about the Lions. Um, Everybody's big on the Lions because they had, they had the freaking – 
Oh, I love them on this. I started watching the Hard Knocks, and yeah. I was like, I feel like nobody was drafting players from the Dolphins until I mean from the Lions until the Hard <laughs> until the Hard Knocks happened. Now. Amon St. Brown can't last for four rounds now. Everybody's oh, draft. Everybody's on the I have a lot of Amon Ross St. Brown. Yes. Uh, a lot of people do. Mind you, this kid. I just is, think his name is fire, too. This like, kid has been a beast. All his brothers are, have the same type name. And another one is in the league, and I think one is in college. Just Amon like Ra means sun god. Yes. His name is sun god St. Brown. There's How a, would I not draft him? They, they're literally the the ball brothers of the NFL. It's like Equimius St. Brown. I can't remember what the other one They is. are literally the ball brothers of the NFL. He's what, he plays for the Bears, if I'm not mistaken. Equimius St. Brown. Yes. He's getting him just and, there's, and there's a third brother. I'm not sure if he's about to enter the I don't league. think he's in yet. I, he's pretty sure he's still playing college ball. They're all wide receivers they all work out they read greek mythology it's like it's like i don't know like the the multiverse switch of the the ball brothers different sport different type of dad but it's like it's all the same premise i believe in the lines do i think they're going to be great no but it's like offensively I think they have a lot of firepower because you have a Mon Ross St. Brown. Mm-hmm. They signed DJ Chark. Mm-hmm. They drafted Jamison Williams. Mm-hmm. They have TJ Hawkinson, who's one of the, I they're, believe, to be one of the 10 best tight ends. They're going to have to score 50 points a game to win. And they have DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams in their backfield. Like, I feel like, yeah, they they're can. They're going to have to score 50 points a game to win. <laughs> that defense is not stopping nobody. That one DN is not going to win games for y'all. He's got, he, he looks really good on hard knocks. He looks oh, yeah. really good uh, on Hard Knocks. The number one pick in the draft, uh, yes. Hutchinson. Yes. He also looks like his motor is not there because he gets tired a lot. And he exudes a lot of energy, yeah. especially at the defensive end position, to where there are going to be plays that he takes off, especially on those longer drives where they're not getting defensive stops. Hmm. The team, the, the offense have to score a lot of points. Um, the game, I, I think the game of the year <laughs> is the, uh, the next game up was the New England Patriots versus the Miami Dolphins. Where you decided to be um, a bitch is the best way to put it. You picked the Dolphins, so that way I had to be, have the Patriots. Yes, she did. It was just crazy because you want the pass to win so you can get the numbers, but I'm pretty sure you've already made several bets with Patriots. I will fans take a loss this week <laughs> to just have the Dolphins win. One, because that's how much I love the Dolphins, and two, that's how much I hate the Patriots. They could suck a fat one, bro. Like, like, you know, I'm never picking the Patriots. I feel like the Patriots could win this game, and I'd still put a loss on here because it's like, I don't want to admit that it's whatever. Um, New England Patriots, thoughts? End of an era. Let's see. Let's let's see. Let's let's see the divine coaching now. Look, we're talking about how bare the cupboard of yes. receivers is in Chicago. Who is he throwing to the Patriots? Talking, well, you, you have a lot of Jacoby Myers stock. Jacoby My- I had two drafts with the Jacoby Myers. You got like one of them was picked because I thought they were kickers. I left the kicker pick and they gave me Jacoby Myers, so I picked them one time in, in a league of sixteen people, which is a super deep, deep super deep league. So you have you meant to, to get, say Dookie. Is what yeah, about to say. Nah, you not, say. Not say. <laughs> so you have to make sure to get like those really deep. So let's players. take some time to talk about the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. What are your thoughts? I mean, you have a quarterback that's better than Patrick Mahomes, um, that can o- underthrow one of the fastest receivers in the game. You have you you do realize you said he's better than Patrick Mahomes, right? That's what you said. Yeah, that's what Tyreek Hill said. I was being yeah. facetious. <laughs> <laughs> Spell facetious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't come for me, bro. <laughs> don't come for me. I love it. I love your energy tonight. Let me take some time. To I love your energy. <laughs> let me take some time. About Listen, let me about finish, it. man. They got a good go back. Ahead, go they got a sturdy backfield. Sturdy. Yeah, because you got um the starter is uh, Chase Edmonds. Chase Edmonds, and then you got Raheem Morissette right behind him. You yep. added Tariq Hill, which is definitely going to help with Tua's confidence. And on the other side of Tariq Hill, you have. Jalen Waddle. Jaden Waddle. And then your tight end is Gasecki, who kind of came on strong towards the end of last season. Yeah. So I, I, I can see you guys. I mean, you're in a division where you can get six games. Now, let me tell you about these Miami Dolphins. I'm going to do like goodness. a WWE promo real quick. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you what you dumb sons of bitches are coming in for when you come in to see step in <laughs> to Sunlight Stadium with the Miami motherfucking Dolphins. Let me tell you something about that boy. Remember a couple of years ago that hashtag tank for Tua? Well, we got that boy. 
Now, I know last year he was a rookie and stuff like that. He looked a little bit like tuna fish, but that's okay. <laughs> what happened is they weren't a well-oiled machine, and they had that boy behind him try to take some of his minutes. We got Teddy Bridgewater. He's a solid brother. I get that. So that way, you know what I'm saying? He has to be a little bit, like, on top of his game. So that way, if anything, that boy, Teddy, ready? That, that boy Teddy is steady. So, like, if it, something happens, I'm not, I'm not mad at it. But you want to talk about offensive muffs from firepower. Let me tell you about the two of the fastest players in the league playing wide receiver. You got Tyreek Hill, the cheetah, and then you got Jalen shake you out your shoes, have you wobble and waddle is out there as well. Waddle, so you got to try to figure waddle, out waddle, waddle. how you're going to defend those guys. Then you got one of the fastest running backs in the league, and Raheem Mustard, who's coming out, you know, playing some scat backs and stuff like that. Chase Edmonds playing in between the tackles. Mike Gusecki. Two guys that'll give you one full season of running back. Mike Gusecki, who's one of the 10 best tight ends in this league. And we're not even talking about the other side of the you football. You said he was top 10? He's one of the top 10 uh, tight ends in the league. It's not hard. It's not hard. We're not doing this. Um, you know, you're not about to like, rock me off my horse right now. Then you want to talk about the other side of the ball where the Miami Dolphins finished six last year in defensive rating. We got our team captain, who our newly named team captain, Christian Wilkins of Springfield, Massachusetts mm-hmm. fame, leading the front lines over there. And then we have Byron Jones and Xavier Howard, two of the best corners in the NFL back there. All I'm saying is it's going to be real dark for you, uh, New England Patriots. The only the only hurdle in our way is a defending ASC East champion Buffalo Bills, who we have to see twice a year. But I'm going to tell you right now, get your popcorn ready because the Miami Dolphins are going to be the, one of the most entertaining teams to see this year. So the next game on the dock. <laughs> We got the Baltimore Ravens and the New York Jets. You good? You got Wait, your chest? You I good? Think so. I think so. Um, I chose the Ravens, which then gave you the New York Jets. Anything you want to say about these Ravens? Um, to be honest with you, it's shaky for me. Really? I'm yeah. actually pretty high on the Ravens, but go ahead. No, I am too. But when you're not paying that man his bread to go out here and be magnificent, it could be some contention in the locker room. Man. Well, you were being serious about that? I thought you were joking. No, this man is entering the last year of his contract, and they still have not spoken to him at all about what his contract is going to look like. Mm. Yeah, and if he decides not to play, then Baltimore is terrible. If he goes out and play, it could affect his ability to get a contract. It's the same situation Dak Prescott went through. And then they have two; they get two years to franchise tag this kid, and it's just like what hap- what's happening with his career. Mm. The backfield's never healthy. So at least for him to have to rush four thousand and throw four thousand. So they have they have a nice running back committee now. Because it's like you got J.K. Dobbins back. Yep. You got Mike Davis, and then they just signed Kenyon Drake. Uh-huh. Like, those are just solid running backs back there. And Two then, of those three guys are always injured. And then Lamar Jackson is like one of the one of if not the best rushing quarterback in the league. You have him. You have Mark Andrews, and I hope that they can get it done. But they need to get this man a check. I like Rashad Bateman. I like I like Bateman too. I like I Devin like Devin uh, Duvernay. Duvernay, yep. That's what I'm saying. It's like yeah. the offense is there, and then it's like on the defense they still have it just Kalias Kibble and like all these other. It's really things. hard to play football when there are undes- undecidables hanging around you. Okay, and the New York Jets. Um, Gary Wilson. That's it. That's all you got to say about them. That's it. You got a. Um, Zach Wilson, who's out here banging people's moms and stuff like that, and like all you want to talk about is Gary Wilson. What? Have you not heard this thing? What? Apparently, uh, Zach Wilson um, had sex with one of his uh, friend's moms, oh and it was like he's, he's goodness. apparently a milf hunter. Oh my goodness! <laughs> what but, his pl- teammates' mom? Yeah, uh, no, I didn't say his teammate. I said, oh, I was about it to could say, be his teammate for all I know. Crazy, like the latte all over again. I can't hey, remember kiddo. if it's his friend's. Kiddo, hey, can you bring my charger, please? Oh, no, no, it's upstairs on the bookshelf. I can't remember if it's one of his friends' mom or if his mom's friends, but I know it was like it was a milf. Was his, and then they, like they asked him about it, he was just like, "I like him older." Mm. Um, but uh, I so think their office. Like, How's your sister doing? I don't have a sister. You will in nine months. Oh Jesus! This sounds like some House of Dragons type stuff. Um, but like, <laughs> I just think that the offense has like a little bit more oomph to it. Like it's a little bit more exciting. Um, they do have. Like you have Garrett Wilson, Elijah Mitchell, who's pretty exciting at receiver. They got uh, C.J. Uzoma from the Bengals. And is it Elijah Mitchell or is it Elijah Moore? Yeah. Elijah Moore. Yeah. Yeah. Elijah, Elijah Mitchell's the running, running back, back for the yeah. 49ers. Yeah. 
Um, Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore supposed to be supposed to be highly touted too. They got Brees Hall, and then what's about oh, Michael the Carter? Running back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brees Hall's name has been coming up a lot. It's been coming up a lot. Because uh, fantasy I just, draft I people could... didn't know what to do with him. Yeah, but it's... they got my I got Makai. He's also playing it. for the Jets. I did, yeah. So yeah, we'll, right see, we'll see. We'll see. But, um, it's a good young team. They have a lot of potential. We'll see what happens. Next game was the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Washington Commanders. Okay. Um, you chose the Jaguars, which is which means I had the Commanders. Anything on the Jaguars? Um, I'm not big on uh, Trevor Lawrence. Okay. But I think having Travis Etienne there is going to help settle him down a little bit. Being able to see hand the ball off to him and see him be successful, maybe a couple uh, passes into the flats or some little slot slant routes or something like that, help build the quarterback's confidence. Because coming off of last year, just it even though it's not looking like that, it could feel like a make or break season for him. You okay. know what I mean? To come in, be the number one guy, and everybody's looking for you to produce right away, and then things do not go well. It's very imperative that they have a good season. But I literally only picked him because they are not as bad as the Commanders. Let's talk about the Commanders. They got Carson Wentz. Okay. Um, Scary Terry. Okay. The boys out there. Uh, they just drafted Jahan Dotson, who people are saying looks amazing mm-hmm. right now. They got Antonio Gibson in the backfield. Um, I can't even tell you who their tight end is on this team. Uh, Logan. Oh, Logan Thomas. I don't have nothing to say about that. Is this the worst team in the NFL? Mm. That is a good question. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to do to the commanders what you just did to that glass of water because that was disrespectful. Like, mm. the, like there's still condensation on the side of this glass, but there's no water in there. Mm. It don't make no sense. That restaurant was fabuloso. Right, we're going to try to speed through the rest of these games. So we have the Cleveland Browns versus the Carolina Panthers. You have the Browns. I have the Panthers. Um, I actually chose the Panthers over the Browns. I think yeah, like you're tripping. I think it's the Baker Mayfield revenge game. Mm-hmm. There's no Deshaun Watson over on the other side. So it's like so it's, who's throwing the ball? Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett. Brissett. Yeah. To Amari Cooper. Yeah. With Nick Chubb in the backfield. Yeah. And Miles Garrett rushing Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Who is this more of a revenge game for? You think Miles ain't about to go get that man? Listen, man, I believe I believe that man was, Baker gonna be like Oh, I forgot you was over there. Here, here, CMC. Here, here. You that's die first, I die second. That's what I want. <laughs> I want Barry Sanders to get as many panic touches as he can get. There's DJ Moore out there. There's um, Robbie Anderson. And then, like, who's the other receiver? Oh, my goodness. It's going to drive me crazy. But there's another one. It's like they have, like, a really solid offensive core. It's like I just – I think that what's about, like, Baker's going to be trying to prove a point that he's not trash. And what's about And it's not going to work. I mean, well, I guess we'll see. Uh, the next game was the Colts versus Are the they Texans. Denzel Ward over there? Yeah. Okay. The, the next game was just making sure we on the same page. Was Go the ahead. Colts versus Texans, where I picked the Colts, so that way you'd be stuck with the Texans. Mm. Uh, any thoughts on the Colts? No. <laughs> any thoughts on the Texans? No. <laughs> Are the Texans the worst team in football? They could possibly be. Because I was like, the Colts got Matt Ryan. Mm-hmm. They got uh, Jonathan Taylor was the number one uh, what's called ticket fantasy like unanimous, uh, unanimously this year. He's gonna get a lot of touches. I have a lot of stock in Michael Pittman. I got a lot of Michael Pittman things. I think he's gonna be. I think he's just gonna be gobbling him up uh, a lot of those end zone targets. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and Joyce is going to Jonathan Taylor, bro. <laughs> I mean, well, catch yeah, 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 but like, yeah, you're right. But it's like we got to get the ball down the field. Yeah, some way somehow. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? He's the guy. Um, next game was the Giants versus the Titans, which was – this might be one of the worst games on the docket, if yeah. I'm being honest. Um, you went with the Titans, which left me with the Giants. Any <laughs> thoughts on the Giants? No. <laughs> Are the Giants the worst team in football? They could possibly be. <laughs> I mean, all they got to say, Quan Barkley. Who's winning who's the, the C.J. Stroud sweepstakes? That's the uh, real question. That's what the real question is, and all these teams could use a quarterback. Tennessee Titans. What are your thoughts on the Titans? They lost A.J. Brown. They lost Julio Jones. Yes. They replaced them with Robert Woods and Traylon Burks. So, I like Robert Woods. Right. I think he is definitely a number one wide receiver. The jury's still out on Traylon Burks. We'll see what happens there. So he's a rookie. He's right. a jury, of course. Jury. Right. But you got Derrick Henry in the backfield. As long as that O-line does what it's supposed to, and you have a coach that's defensive-minded, he'll get guys to get stops. I mean, I think Titans are going to be okay. 
Um, they'll they'll make the playoffs, but I think they'll have a first round out. The next game, the Packers versus the Vikings, which you pick. Wait, you picked the Vikings. I thought I picked the Vikings. I picked the Vikings, and you picked the Packers. You were the one putting the names down. So <laughs> if I I picked the Vikings, so that way you got stuck with the Packers. Okay. Any thoughts about Aaron Rodgers and these Packers this year? They got time for you to prove you the guy, Aaron. Time for you to prove you the guy. You ain't got nobody but young people to throw the ball to. You got uh, uh, your running back that will help. Aaron Jones? Yeah, save a little bit. And A.J. Dillon that will help save a little bit. A.J. Dillon is a receiving back, so is Aaron Jones. So I'm pretty sure they're good good picks because not only are they going to run the ball, but they're going to catch the ball a lot as well until these other guys get up to speed. But – I mean, this is your time to prove why they gave you all the money instead of Devontae. They did have back-to-back MVPs, so like that'll that'll do it. Yeah. Um, anything on the Vikings? It was like I think a lot of people like is a pretty. Are they a Super Bowl contender? They're a lot of people's favorites to be up there. Why? Because they have Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, uh, Kirk Cousins. Who's the other receiver? Uh, Adam Thielen. And the defense was pretty solid last year. And it's like they're playing in the division now where it's like them, the Lions, the Bears, and the Packers. It's like everybody's like decimated. It's like as long as they I, stay I, healthy. I'm not saying they don't have a good team, but like Super Bowl contenders? The NFC is super weak this year, bro. It is like the, it is like the Buccaneers, the Vikings, and the Rams. It's like that's like kind of like kind of it. All teams that can beat the Vikings. <laughs> you say so. I think we'll see. I think Justin Jefferson is like it, this is his year to be like – like we've seen him, he's arrived and like he's done all this other stuff. But it's like Who's I quarter- think he's I think he's trying to prove now that he's like the number one. Who's the quarterback? Kirk Cousins. Stop. He's like the definition of like solid quarterback. Yeah, he's like a Kurt Warner. Yeah, Kurt Warner won MVP. Yeah. Okay. Maybe Kirk Kirk Cousins won MVP. Okay. <laughs> um, probably one of the best games on the whole schedule: the yeah. Kansas City Chiefs versus the Arizona Cardinals. No, you got the best game. I said one of the best games. Which is what I said. Oh, okay. um, I picked the Kansas City Chiefs, which gave you the Arizona Cardinals. Anything you want to say about the Chiefs? No Tyreek Hill anymore. I feel like their season is going to start with growing pains. I think a lot of their their victories and the way they won football was based on chemistry and how they built that team from the ground up together. And now it's a lot of new faces. And I don't think a training camp is enough time to build that chemistry. I think the complete opposite. I think it's almost addition by subtraction. I think like you lose Tyreek Hill, who was like a big focus point. But then what they did is like they supplemented that with like Juju. now there's like three people there. Yeah. Because it's like we lose Tyreek Hill, but we get Juju Smith-Schuster, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, and Sky Moore, like as a rookie, so that. So like now, I've been hearing a lot about Sky Moore. There's been a lot of a lot of good stuff, and like he's apparently extremely fast as well. Yeah, I think the person that this benefits the most is uh, Clyde edwards helaire Well, I hope so, because I feel like um, they were just so used to giving it to Tyreek or or airing it out with Mahomes that he. But Travis of, Kelsey. Yeah, with Travis Kelsey that he kind of fell to the back burner. So now I think this forces them to enter institute the running game a little more than what they were. Okay. And Clyde can get back in the stride, which will make things easier for Patrick to make these throws. Um, but I do think that they're going to lose this game. And then the Arizona Cardinals. I like Kyler Murray, man. You know, I stay on the black UV wave, man. I mean, you know, so – and not saying that, Patrick, it's not on that wave because uh-huh. he is, but it's like – But, I you know, see- D-Hop is injured – or D-Hop is suspended is for the first couple games. Yes. So – that could be the deciding factor. And but they got Marquise Brown to kind of replace it. Yeah. Hollywood Brown. Yep. And I like for me, I just want to see Kyler be successful, man. I really, I really like the way he plays football. And I hate for people to say, oh, he can just run. He can't make decisions. Like the kid hasn't really had a chance to settle in. So I don't believe in James Conner. I was trying to fade him in every single fantasy draft that we did. I was like, I don't want no parts of that dude. I think Chase Edmonds would always get them up the field, and yes. then James Conner would fall into the end zone yes. for him. And it's like now that Chase Edmonds isn't there anymore. I agree. I think we're about to be exposed. I agree. Um, next game, Las Vegas Raiders versus the Los Angeles Chargers. Game of the week. I selected the Chargers so that way you can get your beloved Raiders. You did not show me the same respect. Mm-hmm. Um, next game, now I'm telling you about the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I'm going to be talking about the Raiders all season, man, so you already know what it is. All right. Um, my only main concern is this offensive line. 
the offensive line. Like we just that's released, gonna be a problem playing Joey Bosa. Right. Team. We just released Leatherwood, who was gonna get killed by Joey Bosa anyway. It was just like McDaniel's is really scrambling. What was up with that? Why did he get released? Did anything behind that? Because he's just terrible. Was he like your so first round pick? Yes, and he was terrible. One of two things: either he was he's really a pumpkin. Or he was trying to get himself released, and he got exactly what he wanted. They said he made some statement towards the Raiders because he just got picked up by the Bears. But oh, did he? Yeah, he got picked up by the Bears. But I don't know if he's starting or if he's a backup, but it's neither here nor there. I literally watched this man get people killed behind the line of scrimmage for a whole season, and I'm over it. So Los Angeles Chargers. This is, tough. this is another team that people it's are talking a, about as a Super Bowl it's contender. A it's a divisional game. Um, last time we played them, it ended on a sour note for them because of bad coaching. So this is kind of like that redemption game, and then they're going to come off swinging. And not only is Joey Bosa a problem, you have freaking Khalil Mack on the other side. So this is going to be a tough one, to <laughs> say the least. Um, Tampa Bay versus the Cowboys. Which is also a good game. I believe I picked Tampa Bay, right? Oh, sorry, I didn't even do that. You did pick Tampa Bay, which gave me the Cowboys. Yes. Um, I just I don't know. The Cowboys haven't figured out who the guy is for them. Like it seems like it's an easy answer. It's Zeke, and it's like they just but they, they refuse to do that. Right. Right. Um, I do have Zeke on one of my teams too, but um, it's just like. Why not let Zeke be the guy? Like, he's going to carry the load. It makes it a lot easier for your quarterback to throw the ball. Your receivers can settle in because you're getting positive yards and you're working your way down the field. Like, they never let one person be the guy in Dallas. Like, Amari was supposed to be it. It never really was him. Then CD came on strong. They went away from CD. Like, Zeke was the guy. And then they went away from him. And then Dak was the guy. And it's like, like just figure it out. Just figure it out. Y'all can't all be the guy. Just let one person be the guy and just make sure to facilitate through them. And if I'm deciding who that is, I agree with you. It should be Zeke okay. before you run out of stock there and then you have no running back at all. The last game on the docket is the Russell Wilson revenge game. Is the Denver Broncos versus mm-hmm. the Seahawks. I picked the Broncos, which gave you the Seahawks. Smart man. Any, anything you want to say about a uh... walk in the mile? <laughs> walk in the mile. Broncos Nation. That's right. <laughs> yeah, weird this, promos that he's doing. This is a this is a dub. This is a dub. This yeah. is a this is our first Monday night game. This, this is, is a, what we're getting. This is a dub. It's See, not I, even Drew Lago yo, there. It's young Gino, yo, listen, Gino Smith. Listen, if there was ever a reason to go hard against your old team, this is the reason. Um, like just just going from from Russell's standpoint, right? Like, mm-hmm. I got freaking DK always in my face complaining. I'm back here scrambling for my freaking life trying to get this ball off. I have no sturdy running back. Like, and you want me to just throw the ball 60, 60 yards down the field to him, which I, I think you still can because DK is a beast. But it's just like, I'm proving you. I'm, you I'm have make, a, I'm a, a make, very unhealthy love and respect for DK Metcalf, and I, I don't do. know why. Because he's always on my team, and I know. But that's what I'm saying is he's always I on your this, team because you have all numbers look like he ain't on my team this year. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna miss Russell this year. Yeah. Um, and then I I don't know. I I know this man wants to beat Pete Carroll, and then come across the field and shake his hand. I know he wants to, and this is he do this for Marshawn, baby. <laughs> do this for Marshawn. Russell man. Wilson is 100 percent gonna shake Pete Carroll's hand. I know. Yeah, I'm just After saying, he like, punches him in the face, he's that's not what punching he him in the face. Not physically. I'm I talking about on the field. Oh, yeah, gonna yeah, beat, yeah. I'm going to beat your team, doing a bunch of stuff that I like to do and some of the stuff you didn't want me to do, and then after I smack your team, I'm going to come across the field and shake your hand. Hmm. Well, I mean, that's kind of it. I know that was like a really long, lengthy two-minute drill. Like that was a lot of football that we just talked about yeah, as quickly as possible, and it's like all of it is speculative at this, at this point in time until people actually hit the field. Yeah, except the stuff I said. That's all. Jesus. Um... <laughs> That means it's time to skip, All right, so let's get all this wax stuff off the way so we can get right to. Oh, don't Lakers. call it wax stuff. All right, Pat Bev to the Lakers. Okay, so we can talk about wax stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do we even need to talk about this? 
This, I don't even think he was in, the, in Utah for a month before he got traded to the Lakers. I guess the big thing about it, though, is they got rid of Taylor Horton Tucker. That is big. And it's like you got rid of this guy Somebody, who hope, you gave the money you should have gave to Alex Caruso to Taylor Horton Tucker, and then now you're trading him for – Pat Ben. It's, not even, it's like thrift store Alex Somebody Caruso. Somebody needs to get fired. Somebody does need to get fired. Somebody needs to get fired. I haven't seen I haven't seen GM in this bad since the OKC catastrophe. Like, okay, there's I, like I don't know what you're doing right now. I, like you're making mad moves just for the sake of like. Are we talking about the Jazz? Or are you talking about the Lakers? The Lakers. Okay. The Lakers are tripping. Like like you're literally making this team worse. Like if I'm LeBron at the crib, like like like. Like fam, just call me. I can tell you what to do. Just call me. Just, just call. matter of fact, I'm pulling my son out of high school right now. I'm gonna send him to the pros for a year, like Lavar <laughs> did, and then we gonna sign him. All right, <laughs> both of them. Like, like cause I don't know what's going on in LA. Utah is also wild. <laughs> like, I do think that this is the preliminary move to a bigger secondary move. Um, for who? Utah? For the Lakers. For the Lakers. Yeah, because like it seems like we're setting the table for this Russell Westbrook deal, and it's like, what is the Russell Westbrook deal? Yeah, the like main thing that's going on right now is uh, you give up Russell Westbrook and a first round and a second round pick, and you get Julius Randle and Evan Fournier. Right, right. I'll take Russ and your two picks because they're gonna be. I'm good sure picks. you would. They're they gonna got... be. They're gonna be good picks because the Lakers is gonna be trash, man. I I have a hard time believing that. I'm gonna let you know that right I now. I know because LeBron will win 40 games by himself. And I, I think Anthony that. Davis, like like as much as we talk about him, glass ball and paper skin, all this other stuff, stuff. Show when me, he's man. on the court, show me. Man. He's one of the best defensive players of this generation. And he's a, one of the most unique offensive players in these past couple of years. I got to see it, man. I have to see it. Bro. They won a championship like two years ago. Okay. What do you mean, okay? Okay. What, what does that mean? Okay. I have to see it, man. You he won a championship. You saw it. No, no. I'm talking about, all right, fine. You won a championship in the bubble two years ago, all right? The next year, you're injured again. This year, you're talking about, oh, I ain't playing basketball like that, but I am working out. I'm going to play basketball. Like You sound like somebody that's quitting before the season even starts. You want to know who's like the reverse of this situation, but like people think the complete opposite of? Who? Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard is the same thing, I'm, did the same thing, hasn't played in two seasons, but people are already talking about like the Clippers are one of the three best teams like in the league. I was like, I don't, I don't know Kawhi I don't, Leonard I like. don't agree. I don't believe in Paul George. Even if Kawhi Leonard comes back healthy, he's the only guy. All right, y'all got John Wall. Good for y'all. What hey, John Wall I'm, are you I'm getting? beyond rooting for John Wall. Yeah, me too. So like, I hope, me too. I hope that they win. Me too. I hope that they win four games and he averages forty and forty. <laughs> like <that's all> right. <laughs> so. Listen, I want to see him be successful too, but I, I, I'm, I don't know what the Kawhi stuff talk about. I don't know what the Kawhi talk is about either. It's just I, I don't believe in it. So you're gonna have both LA teams that look like they're struggling through the season. All right. Well, now that we, I can't believe we spent that much time talking about that tomfoolery. Right. But the bigger thing that happened, speaking of the Utah Jazz, yeah. is Donovan Mitchell has finally found his home. Yeah. He first things first. Okay. Rest in peace, Uncle Phil. I'm sorry, bro. Stephen A. Smith, bro. Yo, go sit down somewhere, bro. All right. Just go sit down somewhere. I'm tired of your 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 your, your tomfoolery. I'm tired of your shenanigans. Tired of your nonsense, all right? It was okay that the Knicks didn't blow up the team to get Donovan Mitchell. Okay, you wanted a star to come to the Garden for what? So we could win 23 games and sell a bunch of seats? Like, you sound stupid. We did. Yes, are we overpaying for guys that we may not, like, necessarily need to pay this amount of money to? Yeah, but I'd much rather do that and build a young team and see where we could go from there rather than getting this guy – Who's gonna go over here, score thirty points a game, make it to the first round of the playoffs, and get out of the playoffs the first round like he's been doing on a so-called better team in Utah in the West if he makes the playoffs at all because he's not gonna have nobody to play basketball with because we didn't gave him all to the team that wanted him and I knew that's what it was because they gave him up to the Cavs just to be spite. I'm not gonna say it's spiteful, but you literally gave him to the Jazz for less than what you asked the Knicks for. I don't. I think that's 100% true. But I mean, like, Who let's they get give it. up? They gave up Colin Sexton. Let me, let me tell the semantics right, of this trade. Okay, my bad. So Donovan Mitchell is headed to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yes. The Cleveland Cavaliers gave up uh, Lori Markkinen, mm -hmm. Ochai Agabi, mm -hmm. who was the 22nd pick in this draft. Mm -hmm. um, 
I can't pronounce this guy's name, but he was the 12th pick also in this draft. Mm-hmm. Um, Colin Sexton, three first round picks and two pick swaps. So that's five draft picks. Colin Sexton, Laurie Markinen, who's also pretty solid in like much about like pieces. And it's like you got rid of Donovan Mitchell, and it's like they clearly want to tank for this Victor Wembanyama. And it's like, who's the two best players on Cleveland before Donovan Mitchell gets there? Uh, Darius Garland and Evan Mobley. Are they both still there? Yeah. I rest my case. And I think Darius Garland and Evan Mobley are better than any two players on the Knicks. I'm not saying that they're not. What I'm saying is the strength of pieces that we did have, they were trying to gut us for. Yeah, what were the pieces that you, that they were trying to take you for? Bro, they wanted, they wanted Emmanuel Quigley, R.J. Barrett, O.B. Toppin. They, were, they weren't getting... Uh, R.J. Barrett. That was never a thing. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. I think Obi Toppin was a piece that they were asking so it was, for. The... Maybe it was my bad. It was everybody else but R.J. And, and Jalen Brunson and Mitchell Robinson. I mean, well, they weren't taking them because they just signed contracts. So, so that's yes. what, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And so, Julius Randle was still going to be there. Don't bring up Julius Randle. But what, I'm saying, but what I'm saying is like four out of your starting five players were still going to be there. So like, what are you really getting gutted for? Like, none of these guys are really, besides Obi Toppin, like, none of them have really done anything. These guys are like the Transformers, bro. Are any of them I as mean, good as Colin like, Sexton? Like, huh? Are any of them as good as Colin Sexton? I, mean, I think he's over-advertised, to be honest with you. So you're telling me that if the Utah Jazz called you and be like, hey, we'll give you Colin Sexton for Emmanuel quickly, you'd say no? Yes. Why? Why? What does Emmanuel quickly do? What does Emmanuel Sexton. quickly do? Just because I like Emmanuel quickly. He fits good on the Knicks. Colin Sexton would not. How, how would Colin Sexton not? He's like one of the best perimeter defenders in the league, and he like averaged like 15 points per game at one point in time. That's what's up. What, what has Emmanuel quickly done? He averages like six and two. Okay. He's done nothing. Like literally nothing. All right. They didn't. And they weren't taking we'll, Derrick Rose either. So like your sixth man was still going to be there. We'll what I'm saying is you got, your team wasn't getting we'll, gutted. We'll see how the season goes. All right. Yeah. The cat. So. All right, the, the big, Cavs the big, are going to be nice, yes, because the, they kept the big question players is, and they got Donovan Mitchell. The big question is how high do the Cavaliers soar now? Are they now championship contenders? So their new lineup, no, or their new starting lineup: Darius Garland, mm-hmm. Donovan Mitchell, mm-hmm. Isaac Okoro, mm-hmm. Evan Mobley, mm-hmm. Jared Allen. Mm-hmm. That is an extremely strong, uh, strong starting five. Yeah, that doesn't make them a championship team. They're going to definitely compete because it's the East and the East. I said a oh, contender. Ter- terrible. The East. You said a championship contender. You last year said that the East was better than the West. No, I did not. Yes, you. Yes, you did. You definitely did. did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, did <laughs> I did say that, but there was a lot of powerhouses in the East, and then they all fell apart. They from from because they all had to play each other. I guess, but a lot of teams folded too, like. Philly fell apart. We know the whole Brooklyn scandal. Like by the time it was all said and done, the real team that you could only look to was the Bucks. So and the Heat, and the Heat, and the Celtics. I was never really on the Celtics. Thing. They went to the finals, bro. Like, what are you talking about? You're talking about before the season started. I wasn't sold on the Celtics. I wasn't talking about before the season started. You just made that weird stipulation for no reason. No, you said you that said I, in the beginning of the season. That's not I, what I, that's not what I said. So I said you guys, said last year that the East was better, and you said that during the playoffs. Like you were like, man, this Eastern conference is crazy, crazy. Like the West is late. It was way more easy. Way, to see when I was say, if I was saying anything about the East, I was not counting the Celtics, and I just didn't believe in that team. They shocked me by making it to the finals, mm-hmm. and I said that because I kept picking other teams against the Celtics, and they kept proving me wrong. So the Celtics was not one of those teams. Do you think that these Cavs now are better than the Celtics? Ooh, you really hate the you really hate these Celtics. So let's. I don't want to sound like a hater. The only you reason too late, too late. Well, go ahead. Goodness. The only reason I'm going to say yes is because there's a. I'm assuming there's a lot of tension in the Celtics organization with all the poor trade proposals that they've been making and letting guys know that they are disposable and on the block. So I don't know the type of headspace the Celtics go into this season. They, they did can, just lose Gallinari for the year. He just tore his ACL. He did tear his ACL. Um, and it's just like, I don't know if this becomes a whole Jalen Brown versus Jason Tatum thing because of the way the Celtics were moving, you know? So if I'm a guy, I may be like, Hey, I may need to get more shots up or do more than what this guy's doing. So I stay, or when I get traded is for something major, 
Like you don't know how that relationship is based on the GMing of the Celtics. So I think that it was very poor taste on their part, especially after coming off a championship run for you to do all this extra stuff and for nothing. But to be fair, nobody went anywhere. Yeah, I know, but it's that's it's still not cool. But it's like after all is said and done, like they kept pretty much every single person that was there for the most part that was a consistent role player. They added Malcolm Brogdon and Danilo Gallinari. Gallinari just got hurt, but it's like they they're don't showing show. that they believe in the team. But it's like, dude, like Kevin Kevin Durant came up. Like it's not like we're not talking about like. They didn't even make a, a frenzy about Donovan Mitchell. Like, there was never any, like, hey, we might trade you for Donovan Mitchell or nothing like that. It's Kevin Durant, bro. No, I get it. The same Kevin Durant that we just shut down and beat four we. games to zero. Okay. All right. So if we did it, why am I the guy going on the block? Why it ain't him? Why are you choosing him? Because if me? I traded you for him it would be a lot less effort for us to beat you because he's that much better than you. This is why our team had to focus to beat that guy because he's that good. Okay, what still makes me feel some type of way. Okay, y'all believe in him, you don't believe in me. I'm I'm all set. Uh, I just believe that he's better than you. And you think players want to hear that from a guy they got to share a court with? Yeah, because, I mean, do I have to convince you that he's he's not better than you? Are we going to do the the Jalen Rose uh, to Paul Pierce when he was saying that him and Dwayne yeah. Wade had similar careers? Is that like what we're going to do? This ain't the same this thing, fam. I don't, I don't see how those, it's not. These are light years between those two players. I don't think Jalen Brown... And if there's Brown, a light year between Jalen Brown and Kevin Durant... I'm talking about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. No one was talking about trading Jason Tatum for Kevin Durant. I know. Jalen Brown. Yeah, exactly. But that's, that's what, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is like, so you're telling me that the person that feels some sort of way is Jalen Brown, right? Yeah. So what I'm, I'm saying is, you, Kevin Durant, Jalen Brown to... comes into my office and he's like, "Yo, you guys are telling me right now that like you guys are trying to trade me for Kevin Durant." Yes. And he goes, "Why would you trade me for Kevin Durant?" I'm like, do you need me to list who Kevin Durant is and why you're not no, that? Question, no, exactly. that's I think we got off topic. It's, the question is not why would you trade me for Kevin Durant. It's like why am I the piece that's getting moved? Because like, you're also very good. You're the second best player in this team, and you're young, and people want you. You should feel like. A sense of entitlement for that. It's like, wow, people think I'm good enough to be traded for Kevin and Durant. What if he doesn't feel like he's the second best player on the team? So Jalen think... Brown balled in the playoffs. Mm, Jalen Brown balled in the finals. Okay. But it's like he, for he, the... tur- he turned a lot of people's attention from what he turned they... your attention because you were very anti Jason oh, Tatum for a long part of it. Goodness. You were very much on I'm this. The only person who feels no, 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 no. But like if listen, if we're talking about on here, yes. you were what you call you were very much yes. like, no, Jason Brown or Jalen Brown is better yes. than Jason Tatum. All that other type of stuff. The entire playoffs, I, Jason Tatum was carrying. I never verbalized that I thought Jalen Brown was better than Jason Tatum. What I said was, you are supposed to be the guy, and you have not shown up to be the guy. But guess who is showing up? Jalen Brown. Only in the finals. Is this what I'm trying to say? Is like he literally. So Jason you're Tatum. telling me this guy is showing up when I need someone to show up the most? So this is your thing. It's like you do this thing where it's like when I need you to show up the most, when I need you to show up the most. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum was carrying them throughout the playoffs. Then now we get to the finals where we have this amazing team who's focused on taking me out. And like we both said, he played like trash. He was awful in the finals, and Jalen Brown was not. But just because for four or five games – you were better than me. I was better than you for 90-something games, but I just didn't have it for these couple of games. That does not make you better than me. Okay. That may not be how Jalen Brown thinks. And I would say, I would be like, like Jalen, Jalen, if that's the way that you think, then we definitely need to trade you because, like, you clearly don't aren't based in any sort of reality. And going back to my original Cause, point. Because if, if, real quick. Because if we, if you are saying that and we are flipping it, and it's just like, so when we make you the number one guy, we only win one game versus when Jason Tatum's the number one guy. We win 20-something games. Maybe you're not the number one guy that we thought you were. All I'm saying, to get back to my original point before we segued on this whole roller coaster of nonsense, is that there is going to be some animosity in the Celtics locker. I'm going to need B-Miz, but I need Paige to hit these comments. First of all, tell me that this man is lying about what he was saying about Jalen Brown last year versus Jason Tatum. What did I say? What did I lie about? I did. I did. I, I said this man is showing up and Jason Tatum is not. 
But you were also like almost like the entire year you were just like, I don't believe in this Jason Tatum business. Not I didn't believe in the Celtics or Tatum. I've admitted to that. It's recorded. I would I'd say And so. I said it I said it a number of times. I'm glad of what he's doing. He has definitely proven me wrong, but can he do it consistently to be a champion? And he could not. Maybe maybe that's it. No. And he could not. Mm, I, you're not you're supposed like, to be getting ready for basketball. Mm, he over here in Texas cold. You're using the consistent C word, and like that to me is like it's like what is consistency I've used to you? It before. It's like because like you're telling because your your whole thing is like oh you couldn't do it for these four games. That's not consistency. That that's the aberration. That's the I not. Understand. That's the outlier. We have, we have to move. We have to move on. No, because like, I want to ask you a question. Yes, I'm going. Yes, I'm, I'm going listening. to make you upset. I'm listening. I'm going to make you upset. Go ahead. All right, me and you work at a job together, right? Okay. All right. This has happened. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're my ride to work. Okay. All right. I, I'm not gonna have a car for a while. You are my ride to work. My livelihood is depending on you picking me up every morning so we can get to work. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm depending on you to be consistent so we can get to work. So I have my livelihood met. Right. Yep. Then all of a sudden, for like a week straight, you do not show up, and I get fired. Should I be mad about that? Does it mean that you're not a good person? Maybe you had something going on. Maybe something this happened. Is- this analogy is wild. Yeah, I told one. you I was going to make you mad, but I'm gonna, this, I want you to answer the question. Do you have a right to be mad that I didn't pick you up? Yes. Did you let me down? It's like, like, yes, if that was your expectation. you not the person that if, you have been this whole time? If while that's your work? expectation of me is that I need to bring a place. It's like, what are you doing while I'm giving you these rides? Like if if I'm these checks, if, if, if I'm stacking these checks, exactly. exactly. Yeah, well, I'm second, almost there. Yeah, I'm, almost, like you I'm, be... I'm almost there. You know, I'm almost there. And I show you the car that I'm about to look at, and you're like, "Yo, that car is fly. It's almost better than my car." Yeah, nah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm on set with this. Your analogy is wild. The real analogy would be like I'm saving my money. And I'm trying to do this to get a new car, and I'm like, "All right," and I'm bringing you to work all year. Yes. And then all of a sudden, like my car breaks down, and I can't come get you. And you're just like, you no, t- but bro, but you're my ride. But you don't it tell is. me your car's broken down. So you get in. So you get in. So you take your. So you take your. You don't tell me your car's broken down. It just breaks down, and you just at the crib chilling. You don't call out of work, and everything didn't tell me or nothing. I'm just at the crib waiting, twiddling my thumbs for you to show. You up. a grown ass man with grown ass money. If you try to tell me, if you try to tell me like an hour before work, you don't know how to get to work, and you don't know how to call an Uber. That's on I you. I didn't know that my ride was not coming because his car broke. You down. did. You did know what time you needed to be at work. You did know that you were late, and you did know you still need to get to work, right? Oh yeah. So that means you oh, do yeah. know the number. Okay. You okay. do know how to download apps. Okay. You do know how much money is in your bank account. Okay. You are a grown ass man with grown ass resources get your ass to work no, no. You, you are a grown ass man with grown ass resources you are set get your ass to work this point. because you tell so people that car, you don't need me your car breaks down your yeah. car breaks down all that money you got in the bank me. you didn't you tell, me, tell me you didn't offer to come fix, some, fix some of these parts of these cars i didn't know i didn't know i didn't know the car was broken down you just didn't show up well, I mean, you would know after like, five, like, hey, yeah, he, after, usually, yeah. he usually comes to pick me up at three fifteen. It's three twenty five. What, yep. like, he yep. might not be coming. Yep. So you I'm, don't have a backup. So plan? I'm late three days in a row. I'm, I'm, late, I'm late three days in a row. So after the first day, you didn't have a backup plan just in case. Like, hey, if it comes to three twenty oh, again, oh I'm yeah, like, I got there late. The second, sounds me like you were second sick, day. You I called an Uber. Uber showed up late. Got there late third day. I walk, try to see if I can get there. I'm I can't late. believe you want me to sympathize with this bum ass nigga that you talk about in this what? story. This is a shitty analogy. You know and no, this person is trash. Listen, man. Listen, man. I just think you're trying to defend the guy who wasn't the guy who was supposed to be. I there. try to defend the provider who then you had different expectations of what my services. Now I owe you to bring you to work every day you because I brought you to work. You should have just told me. What do I need to tell you? That your car what do, broken why down. do I owe you that an explanation? Your broken down. Why do I owe you? Why do I owe you? Frame of mind, and that you was texting Kobe waiting for a response. Why do I owe you an explanation? My car is broken down, and I have to figure out. Because we're in this together. You are not my main priority. This together. You are not my priority. You hear that, Jason? You hear how he's talking for you right yes. now, man? You telling Jalen Brown, your guy, that he is we're, not your, we're he on, is not your priority. We're on the Y'all court together. Y'all are not in this together. We're no, on, don't use the word together. Together is we're no on the court together. together. You can see what's going on. I need to be like, yo, I don't got it right now. They're focusing on me. You're sitting right there. You can't see that. That's what's happening. And I'm holding you down. I'm like, yo, fam, I'm holding you down as much as you can. Like, you want to like, try? You want to try to work this out? You want to try to work this out? What is it? The flat no, tire? Is I think, I think you're slowly realizing. But it's a lot harder to do what I do than, than what you do, isn't it? It's a lot harder to be to be this guy. Oh, to be 
<laughs> first team all NBA. Oh it's not goodness. the same that what we do, is it? Oh my goodness. I think it's the reverse role. I think that you've been the guy and I've been consistently supporting you by handling my load and now you have to be the guy to support me but he wasn't, and you don't know how to do it. But he wasn't handling the load. But no, 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 no. Listen to what I said. Jason Tatum was the guy. Yep. He needed a few little attributes to help him over the hump so Jalen Brown would get like his 20 a game, 15 a game, play great defense, get boards, hold him down, right? So, okay, we're going to switch roles. You're struggling, so I'm going to do what you've been doing for the time that you can't do it. I just need you to do what I was doing for you, which is not the top level of what you were just doing, and you couldn't do that. Okay. Oh, 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 he got to rethink it. He got to rethink it. I don't have to rethink it. Okay, still, I'm listening. You're still wrong on it. Okay, it's like, I'm listening. It's like, yes, because right. you you have to do what I used to do, right? Yes. But you still have to, a lot easier road to do it because everything is still focused on me. You just no, have no. to do this. No, no, no. It's easier for you because the expectation is not as high as what you were doing. So you get to not be as great as you were. I don't but get still, to not be great. Like people fan, are still expecting fan, me to do fan. this. If I'm running the company, I can't keep doing this with you. If I'm running the company, mm -hmm. right? And you're just delivering the mail and you get sick and, and, and now you have to run the company and I have to deliver mail. You ain't gonna be mad because I can't just deliver the freaking mail. You are now running the company. Yeah, because delivering the mail is easier. Exactly. <laughs> so if Jalen Brown's running the company that you used to run because you can't run it right right now, I just, actually, need you, I just need you to do it backwards. I just need you, you to deliver the mail. I just, but you get what I'm saying. But it's not, I just need you to deliver mail. I need you to run this offense. I need you to score 30 plus points per game. I need you to hit game winning shots. And you're not even being guarded but, by but, the best players on this team. that's what I'm saying. I'm going to do that for now because you can't. But get you're it not done. doing it. He no, didn't no. do it. Like, Jalen Brown was balling. No, he, yeah, he was doing better than what he was, but he wasn't still a Jason right. Tatum. So I just need you to be lackluster if that or or decent you wouldn't even do that for me no you need me to be better you still it's like i oh i don't need to be a plus level i don't need you to be better me i just need you to be me while i be you no because i can be you you can't be me oh my goodness man. all right yeah, like, listen we're gonna walk away from this right, we're gonna, we're gonna right, leave so it like up we, to pythagoras if we did, if we did and it, be missed if we did it real quick jason tatum was averaging like 30 points per game yes jalen brown at the time yes. was averaging like 12 points per game Okay. When we switch it, Jalen Brown doesn't start averaging 30 points per game. He starts averaging like 24 points per game. And J and Jason Tatum is now still doing 12 to 14 points. It's still the math ain't mathing. It doesn't equal the same amount. Okay. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things is trash. Okay. Uh, Jason Brown, Jalen Brown's not trash. Let me not, that. <laughs> yeah. Let me not do that. I actually really like Jalen Brown. But I all I'm saying too. is like you too. have your place. And it's like you're not in my tier, bro. Okay. You're not all NBA. You are an all-star. Okay. You're not all NBA. Okay. And when you got your chance to okay. show everybody that you can be all NBA, okay. all you showed him is like, oof, he's a good second option. Okay. He's not a good number one option. Okay. So if you feel like some type of way because we wanted to trade you for Kevin Durant, continue to feel some type of way because mm. like you're not that. Okay. You're not that. Okay. That's all I was trying to say. Okay. Right. Do so you not have... even Mitchell got traded to the Cavs. <laughs> I think this makes the, they the are going, I do think they're going to be a top five team. Are they better than the Heat? Yes. Are they better than the, the Nets? Yes. <laughs> Why you shake your head like that? Because these teams all look like, like they got too much going on to where you can't believe in Hawks? them on the court. No, that's going to be a good game to watch. I, I'm, I'm actually, I would go somewhere and watch that game. Okay, like yeah. If they both start the season strong and then they collide, like I really want to see what that game looks like, especially with Dejounte out here disrespectfully disrespecting people. Donovan Mitchell versus Dejounte. Word. John the Baptist versus Evan Mobley. <laughs> Trey Young versus Darius Garland. Clint Capella versus J Jared Allen. <sighs> Dang, that sounds crazy. Make a pick right now. Uh, I'm going to Cavs. I'm going to Atlanta. Okay. Oh. You make a bet? No, we got wings? too much out wings? there. Wings? Yeah, we'll do wings. Wings order. How about right we now. go watch the game together, and whoever teams wins, they just pay that. All right, well, that's that's good. 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 We only only do food. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a um, – oh, my God. Like, not raising that. The cultural gem. I have a raisin net while I look up a coach. <laughs> we can just right, go to a coach. You have a raisin net. I do have a raisin net. Go ahead. Um, so, in light of recent events, it brought myself to understand that um, we are all allotted an opportunity to be a part of 
or if not witness moments of greatness in time. And I think that we have become so privy to these moments that we don't understand what's happening in those moments of greatness. So like I've had friends that I've lost that I have seen them at their greatest moments of like, yo, this was a moment of greatness where you were doing something that I've never seen anybody else do. Doesn't mean people haven't done it. No, but for my eyes, I have never seen it. And this is dope. This is a moment of greatness. When you see people fathering the right way, mothering the right way, people in great relationships, like these are moment of greatness that impact the person that you are and how you grow. With that being said, I think people were being a little misunderstanding of the Serena Williams situation as she ended her career playing a 29 year old at 40 years old and literally fighting for her life to stay into this match. She ran out of steam and lost. So it start as soon as the girl, is there a, is there a situation like people are saying negative things? It about has this? become a situation. Um, I don't know how far it has grown, but I don't know if you watched the match or not. I did not. But as soon as Serena lost, the first thing they did was interview Serena. You would have think, thought she won the match. Like the other girls over there packing her stuff up. Like she's sitting there quietly and just like waiting. People are cheering for her. After Serena's done talking, people start leaving the stadium. Like they were talking to Serena for like a good grip. And then they go and talk to the other girls. A really quick interview. She like gives credit to Serena and plays, pays homage. And then it's over. So people are like... Wow, why would they disrespect US Open and the, the player who won by making it all about Serena? Like, this is a moment of greatness. Like, you're never going to see her in this situation again. If I was the one who played against Serena, why would I not let her have this moment? I bet y'all don't even know if she won her next match or not. Like, so it's just like, I think we, we get so caught up in ourselves that we don't realize what's happening around us. And like, this is something that has never been done before. Like she, like not only could you count her as like the greatest women tennis player, you can count her in the ranks of greatest athletes ever. So it's like when they start listing names of people, her name is going to be up there. This is a moment of greatness that we don't know how long it will be before you see this again. So it's just like respect that. And that doesn't just go for Serena and sports, but it's just like things that are happening around you. Like you may have a family member that's always been in trouble and never listened to anybody and they do something like get their GED and become a functional member of society and get a job and then goes go to school even more like that's a moment of greatness for them and we are missing these moments to celebrate people and we're just expecting it to happen when it doesn't always go that way. Um, I didn't realize that this was like a situation thing but like it's also Yes, this this girl. I don't even know who who the the woman was. Um, that beat her. It's like yes, you just beat Serena Williams. I know like, she's in, from, in her. from Australia, I believe. I'll look it up while okay. you're talking. But it's like you know you be, you beat Serena Williams like in her last game. But it's like that's the spectacle. Is like this is Serena Williams like last game. So it's like yes, um, we're gonna talk to her because like to to us right now like this is the biggest milestone of your career. That's her name. I don't know how to say it. I don't want to bully it. Uh, Ajia Tomjanovic looks like that's a good job. Um, but like, yeah, it's like this isn't you didn't win the championship or like anything like that. Like you advanced like to the next round, but it's like no, like the whole reason like why we're all here, the reason these people paid this money is because we're here to watch Serena Williams last mm -hmm. game. So like, I don't think that it's disrespectful to talk to Serena during Serena Williams last game because we will never get a chance to talk to Serena Williams again on the tennis court. You, on the other hand, if you're good enough, we will see you again either next round or in the next couple of years. Um, we are in the age now because, like, I believe, like, when you and I were growing up, mm -hmm. um, players retired very unceremoniously. Like, a lot of people, like, they're, they didn't get to go out with a bang. They didn't have the farewell tour seasons or, like, this is going to be my last year. It's like a lot of people, like, their careers ended in tragedy or, like, they were shells of their former self. You think about like the Barry Sanders, the Bo Jacksons, the Allen Iverson, Tracy McGrady, um, even Michael Jordan. Like you know, like he left like on a on a higher note than most. But it's still like the Washington Wizards years were not great years for Jordan. Right. And um, just to not be disrespectful, she did win her next match. She's in a corner final. And there's one U.S. player in the other quarterfinal, so they couldn't meet each other. And I'm pretty sure the young lady that's in the other quarterfinal is the one who beat Serena last time. Okay. 
Her name is Coco Goff. I think that's how you say it. Very young girl. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't even remember. Like you completely took the steam out of my engine now. Like where I was going with it. Um, but you were saying that I, I, get, I think what I'm trying to say is like we are at the age now where players have more agency over the end of their careers. Mm-hmm. We're getting Kobe Bryant's final game. We're mm-hmm. getting um, Dwayne Wade, Paul Pierce. They're getting farewell tours. Um, I'm trying to Vince think. Vince Carter. Yeah, Vince Carter. Like we're getting like a lot of these things now and like now it's like sure. serena's last game it's like so like these things have become spectacles and mm-hmm. like that's and it's become the narrative is more important than like the actual event that's taking place mm. people talk about like how great kobe bryant's last game was but it's like the game meant nothing sure. it was just kobe bryant's last game and right. if he would have lost which if you ask me who watched the game lot it seemed like the jazz let him win and was letting him get a lot of shots off and stuff like that too but it's like the, the gesture is more symbolic um, and like at the end of the day, anyway. So it's like, should this girl feel discouraged because they didn't want to talk to her? Like, I'd say no. Like, is it annoying? Yes. But it's like, you like if if you weren't playing Serena Williams, like we're still not talking to you, and we're still not doing this mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, John McEnroe had came out and said that Serena Williams belongs in the class with people such as LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Tom Brady, Tiger Woods. And Muhammad Ali, and he's like, and he's not, and she's not last on that list. Mm. And n- naming those people in, there's, in that list, like, do you think that there's other people that belong in there? And uh, I don't want to say like how high Serena is, but uh, like, I think she is firmly planted in the upper echelon of those ranks. Yeah, like I think you could you can put yes. like a Bill Russell um, in there like as well. But it's just like I. As much as we probably praise Michael Jordan, I think Muhammad Ali might be at the top of that list. Mm. But it's like if you have like Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, and Serena Williams, like mm. that's not a bad three. Tiger Woods, like right after that, like no, she I was, mean she's in, she was she's literally in, one major tournament away from tying the all time record. She's in the most elite company, and if anything, the, all the elite people are in her company, and then more than anything. Yes. So. I know we did like a kind of like a shout out to like her career before and stuff like that, but it's like, yo, you want to talk when we when you talk about goats, like the tennis goat is Serena Williams. Like at the end of the day, male or female, right? And respect those moments of greatness. They are far few in between. As much as we think they're happening, often like we are not appreciating them. All right. All right. All set. Yeah. All right, so now we got episode sixty-one coming up next. Are we what you call are we doing this weekly? Or are we even having like this discussion? All right, so we got a discussion off camera. We got a discussion. There off we camera. go. There we go. All Don't right. worry, we got more content coming for y'all more often now that we're getting in the stride of getting back into the hustle and bustle of work and the seasons changing and everything like that. We got y'all. Oh yeah, football's coming so back, so we're gonna have a lot more content. We know y'all love us. So we'll see y'all episode sixty-one, man. Much love. Boom. boom.